Hey, everybody. How's it going? Welcome to Tone Talk with Mark Uzanski and Dave Friedman. We have a really special guest tonight. We're all amped up. We're ready to rock and roll with Phil X. How you doing, oh, buddy? Hey, there's the name, Phil X. I hear it so often lately. Uh, I'm good, man. How you doing? <laughs> good. I've been hearing your name a lot lately also. That was, depends on which circles you uh, float around in, right? <laughs> That's true. That's true. I've been on the internet circles, the uh, actually the GitCon circles. So I've been Dude, seeing you all. Okay, here. I'm, well, actually, there's two things I got to go into right now. Um, sure. <laughs> I'm growing a mustache. I see that. Only for set for tomorrow. My brother, my my brother, my son's birthday party. I'm kind of doing like a pseudo Jack Sparrow from space vibe. So I thought instead of, instead of having uh, a sort of fake mustache, I would use my Greek jeans. And grow one in three days. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that that seems about right, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm working on it. That's why it looks shitty right now. It's it's like, hey man, is that a mustache or dirt on your? So lip? so, <laughs> in like an entire week, you could have a total '70s porn mustache going. I think I think that's possible. Yeah, I think that might be possible. that might be a look to have. That might be. But it's funny that you brought up <laughs> GitCon because I've been watching some videos from GitCon, and although a lot of the communication was amazing. All the guitar tones were terrible. Yeah, well, next year we'll have better ones. How's that? Hey, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> well, this yeah. is the thing, too. It's how everything was recorded with clipping. And I, they, they tried these, these direct cabinet simulators into the amps. And I'm like, oh, come on, guys. And everything was recorded hot and bright. And mm. I mean, it was an amazing experience. But if that's going to be, that's the only thing I, could, I, I would improve on. And if it sounds like, a, if you're talking about it, then maybe it's going to be awesome. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, first year you always expect some bugs, but yeah, I mean, that, I, you know, yeah. quite honestly, I didn't notice it, but I'll probably notice it now that you said it <laughs> when, right. I, when I watch the videos. But <laughs> I should just keep my mouth shut then. <laughs> but it didn't. Dave like, noticed it. Dave noticed it. Well, it depends. I noticed on, it. Did you? It, I guess it depends on what you're uh, you're listening to it on. I, most of the time, I'm yeah. listening to that stuff on my phone. There. So, hey, hey, look, there's someone in the corner here, Phil. You might know. Dude, what's happening, man? Mike on is everyone. Say hi. <laughs> Mike on hey. is. How are How's you, brother? Going, man? Amazing. How you doing, man? Oh, I can't hear him. He's uh, saying hi. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> he can't, he can't hear him. <laughs> I'm in the headphones. That's cool. So tell us, so, who is that? I just want to make sure because I Mike Mike on is from Allison Chains Space Boy. Yeah. Nice. One of the best. Okay, one of the best dudes on the planet. Absolutely. Um, but one of the best. Ba live bass tones I've ever heard in my life. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. he's amazing. Growling. What does he play out of? I don't know. Uh, uh, Is it a Spectre uh, bass? Spect uh, yes. Warwick bass from years ago. Really old one. Yeah. Um, he has it actually here today. Actually, by chance, he's in the other room doing some work with Fishman, seeing if they can do some pickups for him. So, wow. Interesting. Um, I know some uh -huh. people that have switched to those guys. Yeah, and uh, and and uh, they're just feeling it out and seeing what's going on. And wait, but how so, do you uh, improve uh, on one of the best live bass tones? Well, I've well ever the heard. problem the problem is he, the pickups that's in his guitar he can't get anymore. He can't uh. get, uh, his favorite one. It's it's like there's some preamp that someone installed in the bass at some point over its years, right. and no one knows what that is. And the person who installed it died. Wow, that's all. That's bad all around. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, that's too bad. <laughs> so, so no one they can't ask. <laughs> right, of course. So, uh, so yeah. So that's the story. I gotta hang on a minute. I gotta close this door here. He needs Whoopi Goldberg from Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> What's her name? <laughs> What's that? Whoopi Goldberg from Ghost. Yeah, what was her name? Yeah, I forget. They need to, to channel the, the, the dead <laughs> in, the, in a seance to find right. out what that preamp what is. What did I miss? <laughs> we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna channel uh, a ghost whisperer to find out what that preamp is. Ah, yes. Sure. I'm sure there's going to be a television show about it, too. Starring oh, Whoopi Goldberg. There we go. There you go. <laughs> Going back to Whoopi Goldberg from Ghost. So... That's cool. Well, uh, hey, you guys go back for a little while, right? Uh, it's obviously we do. We go back to a amp show. 
I know, and it's funny because you usually don't meet people at Amp Show. <laughs> and Amp Show, we were exhibiting at, and I, I think we've told this story online before. And, and, uh, an Amp Show, we were exhibiting at, and Phil comes in the room. I knew who Phil was. He comes in the room and he plugs into a, a those stack of amps that we had there. We had a bunch of stacks there that that time, which was really cool. It was awesome. And uh, it it just looked really. You walk in, you went, "Wow!" Nice. <laughs> and uh, impressive. He, he plugged in, and the first thing he did was turn the gain down. And, uh, and I'm like, thank God. <laughs> you turned the gain down. You're my favorite of the day. <laughs> right. Well, you, I, he was saying that usually people walk in and dime the preamp without even listening. They just plug in, dime the preamp, and go. And I'm like, that's like you, you, yeah, all the clarity. Even, you know, if you want that. the clarity and punch – Oh, you yeah, have to clean it up pack. a little bit. The yeah. Attack and the percussiveness and everything. Yeah, yeah gotta, but gotta come it was one of those things. Where I hit it, you know, and maybe it was um, that Dave knew who I was, but he was like, hey, do you want to to want to borrow a BE100? And, um, and I did for a rehearsal. And I was like, oh, my God. Like the way that amp responded <laughs> to my hands. I was like, I think this is the best amp I've ever played. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> it was one of those, and you, and you know it's a good amp when the drummer goes, "Hey, that amp sounds great," because they don't know anything. But right, right, right. <laughs> but, but, but they're feeling it. They're like, "This, there's a difference going yeah, on." Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, you know what? I've got the BE100 back here. There you go. In cream. In cream. Yeah. yeah. And nice. uh, it sounds awesome. It really just. It's a beast. So, like, when you went on, what, what, I don't know what amp you were playing, but like, what? Where'd you put the gain at? I'm just curious. Like, when you when you put it back. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us. I, one o'clock. Yeah. One o'clock. That's where I have mine. Exactly. On the BE channel. One o'clock. Yeah, not the Harry BE channel. No. But, no. Uh, yeah, it was one o'clock. And do you keep the saturation switch all the way to the right? Off. I, I, think, I think all the switches were off. Yeah. I think once no, no, no. I, I think when we did the, the, I did a demo at the, at the shop. And I was playing a strat, and that's the yeah, one time my, my I kicked strat, in the fat Hendrick. switch. Oh and yeah, I, when you when you did the Hendrix stuff, yep. That's the one time I, I switched in the the fat switch, and it was mm -hmm. insane, and everybody responded because it was insane. It was awesome. Yeah. I was actually talking about the uh, the gain switch that's on. The oh, front. They, we, it, they didn't have it at the time, so it would have been full gain. Full gain. Okay. So oh, yeah, the BE sweat. channel full gain. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, so that's what I have mine on, and I keep it at one o'clock, and that's more than enough. It's like yeah. I could. Uh, I don't think you need to go. Maybe I'll boost it a little bit with the uh, the bucks and boost I've got now. See, I, I haven't even heard that thing yet. I'm way behind. Oh, you you should you'd like that. I think. Just I think I would too. <laughs> tweak tweak yeah. it. I gotta send you one. Tweak send it. Uh, tweak it. Any. How, how do you want the boost to sound? Okay, and just you know. It just yeah. does it. That's yeah, awesome. it just does it. Just hits it a little harder, and if you want a little more mid range, you can have it, or less, or brighter. Or, Darker. I cut or, the EQ off of it. So whatever just, you want. Yeah. So I was oh, just you saying, can cut the. It's got an EQ cut. So it's so yeah. So it's got uh, the pedal has a, a tight knob and a boost knob on the basic part of it, yeah. and then it has EQ in and out switch. So you don't have to use the EQ. Wow. Uh, you can just use the tight knob and the boost knob, which while well, the tight knob makes it tighter. Yeah. Believe me or not, people ask questions. What does the tight knob do? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I also I also get questions of what does the fat switch do? Oh my god! <laughs> it makes it tight. So, uh, you know, I don't know. Turn the knob and listen and see what you think. <laughs> yeah. I know it's it's one of those things, right? Yeah, but you know, some yeah. some amps lie though. Because uh, yeah, that companies they have they have a, a sponge and bold yeah, switch, uh -huh, uh -huh. but it's but it's sponge and less sponge. Yeah. <laughs> It's not really bold <laughs> or right. sponge and crap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Your amp. I I, I want to take it out to a, a practice one night. It's just too big to do. But um, <laughs> hey, I, dude, put your back into it. Yeah, <laughs> I bring the run get, twenty with me. I just did get that. A, get practice. a dolly. <laughs> exactly. I know. Get a dolly. It's freaking old. Buy, buy a two twelve. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get my, no. Actually, they have a four by twelve there. Actually, the cab oh, at the practice the studio. Head, then. And oh, I yeah. just need to take the head. So there you go. But uh, 
So tell us, so how, how long ago was that you guys met up at the show? I don't even remember how many years ago that was now. I don't remember either, man. Quite a while, I think. Because uh, I haven't even been to an amp show in a few years because of scheduling conflicts. Yeah. Um, man. Okay. Five, seven years ago, something like that. Uh, you know what? It's coming back to me because uh, 2013 is when I started playing the BE100. And then I got the call to continue the Bon Jovi right. tour. And right. I was pleased as a kid on Christmas with the brand new bicycle <laughs> to learn that I was walking into Richie using BE 100s. Yes, you were happy. So I, I, I and they're so like, that, okay, yeah, that, that we're going to make this, we're going to make this, uh, you know, very uh, easy, you know, the, with the flow. So you're just going to use Richie's amps. And I'm like, ah, uh, BE 100s, ah, uh, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was awesome. Oh, so it was like a, a natural step, easy to just. Yeah, so that I mean, yeah, so it was probably five years ago, maybe yeah. something like that. Yeah, 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 something That's like cool. that. And then what led to the X amp? Um, there was a um, Dave just called and he said, "Hey, is there something that you would do different than the BE one hundred?" And um, and yeah, my my answer was always, uh, "I love what I get out of this amp." But if I want to clean it up for, you know, classic stuff like Zeppelin or ACDC, I feel like it changes the sound a lot. So, and then he said, well, we could put a gain cut in it. And then we went back and forth a few times. And then it was an alligator clip in his shop. <laughs> Dude, you, like this or you like this? I'm like, you know, because he's a tech guy, right? He's looking at, at the, an open chassis like he's reading a magazine and looking at pictures of nude girls. And I'm like, <laughs> and, and uh, he's like, hey, let's try this value, but a different, uh, let's do ceramic instead of this. And, da -da -da -da. and I'm like, it's still a little bright and brittle. And he goes, well, let's put this alligator clip over here. And bang, I hit a chord and I, oh my God, that's it. And he said, he, t he made a note of it and we were done. But I mean, yeah. To be in that situation, that's an amazing opportunity for a guitar player yeah. to be in the same room with an amp genius that's just listening to your direction, you know? Your wants. Yeah. Your, yeah. Yeah. What's in your head and kind of translating it. That's, that's so awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was fabulous. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. So, so your amp is a, it's a one channel amp, right? Yes. That's so cool. With the gain <laughs> cut. And the other thing is too, is I asked for a second master because like when I when I play with my band and when I play in clubs and stuff like that, and sometimes you have a house sound guy who doesn't know your stuff, it's really amazing to boost your own solos. And I noticed one night I was doing the first time I used it was at a baked potato at a Kenny Aronoff and Friends night, and I got up and I used that head, and the first and when I boosted my solo, <laughs> <laughs> not only did I like it, but the entire room. Liked it. <laughs> they were like, oh. I like took we can hear them. It took everybody's <laughs> breath away. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty great. Yeah, that's that, that is a cool feature. I might actually have to have you add that, Dave, with separate master on the amp one day. Take your bucks and boost and put it in the loop of the amp. In the loop. There you go. Mm, there you go. It. Really? Yep. It'll boost volume then. Okay, because the HBE and you, and you have the EQ to tweak it a little bit. Wow! Oh, yeah. See, I'm learning something too now. Check that yeah. shit out. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. So that, that's right? good for when you when you go uh, when you do flyaway dates and they have supplied back line. You put the bucks and boost in the if that well, the bucks and boost would can fix pretty much any piece of junk. You know, you can. You can <laughs> that's a you bold can, statement. Well, I mean, when you said. They rent you something and you get basically a piece of junk, probably, yeah. <laughs> or something. But, but yeah, you can just shape it and boost it and just kind of make it, you know. Hmm. That's awesome. All right. Well, that amp's a little bright. Okay. We'll dial it down and dial it mid up a little bit. Okay. Here you right, go. Right, Put right. it on. Boom. There you go. Done. Yeah. <laughs> That's super cool. Yeah, I'll have to try that. But does it push the, it doesn't push the amp as hard if you put it in the, uh, maybe I'm wrong, if you put it in the loop. It's not it won't push, push it. it at all. It'll just it'll just raise and lower the volume with whatever EQ curve you have on it. Ah. And if you could, any, what if you just cut the EQ? 
then it's just going to boost the volume? Yeah, like if you turn the tight knob at fully the uh, fattest position, it probably will be relatively transparent. Hmm. Maybe not the fully oh. fattest, but I can't remember where that is exactly. <laughs> Look at this. We're talking tone tonight. We are. That's what it's, it's a tone talk. That's what it's called. Yeah, huh? exactly. Tone talk. It's tone talk. <laughs> I even have a logo for you, man. Well, tone talk. 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 Tone I like that. So, so now, now we're just going to take this video segment of you doing that, and that'll be the intro to the show. Show. You're welcome. <laughs> Done. I'll get that uh, clipping out. It's fucking simple. <laughs> exactly. And we'll just hold, you'll just hold it up on your iPhone towards the the video camera. And go see it. <laughs> we're all high tech. That's yeah. a, that's the budget we have here. <laughs> and I'm the knowledge could, too. I'm glad it could help. Yeah, I'm not much on the tech stuff so that that sounds like a good idea just go like this right <laughs> oh let's do it again right yeah <laughs> so now <laughs> i won't ask you to do it again um hang on what happened here there you go all right so uh I'm gonna, i think i'm gonna jump into chat real fast and say hi oh. to some folks and That'd see if you, I, I i think a lot there's a lot of a lot of stuff here let's see uh we've got 54 oh. people watching right now and you you're the only one that can see that um, yeah, you can't see it. You, that's fine. That's cool. I, I believe well, actually, it. you could see it if you if you just go to our YouTube the YouTube page. You can see and watch it on my phone. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you're doing that on your thing, you can have the YouTube page on your phone. Yep. And, yeah. Uh, you just gotta mute it. That's all. I'll just make. I'll just. I'll just believe that you're not making up the questions and the. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I won't be making them up. I promise. Well, maybe a couple. See what we, I want to get in there. Uh, so we got Craig Lavender. Hello from Spokane, Washington. Whoa. Uh, Mantra Sky. Hello from Cleveland, uh, Ohio. Scott MacArthur. Hey, everyone. Bill Ryder from Milwaukee. Quentin James. Hey, all. Sinner. Uh, Cheddar Kung Pao. Cheddar Kung Pao. That's a that's a that's a handle there. That's a name. Yeah, huh? I'm getting hungry now. Um, <laughs> Phil, uh, DJ Asterix doesn't sound good though. Cheddar Kung Pao. Kung Pao. Cheddar, no, I picture cheese whiz and kung pao. Oh, not, not nacho. The yeah, the not, nacho cheese. kung pao. No, no, no that yeah. wouldn't yeah. be good. No, <laughs> no. Um, DJ Asterix says, "Phil, you were awesome at GitCon with oh. a thumbs up and nice uh, little." Devil Thank you. There. Yeah, I thought you were also. Uh, great Thanks, playing, um, and the, I thought the videos were cool. I thought the sit down that you did with. Uh, Pete Thorne was freaking awesome. I've been waiting for you guys, you and him, to sit down and talk for a while. Yeah, we totally geeked out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally geeked out. Which That's was awesome when that happens. Well, I mean, it's 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 great when you get to get, um, a, you know, get along with somebody even without guitars in your hands. And then when you add guitars into the mix, right. it's a whole it's a whole geek thing. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's a cool dude too. So. Um, Okay, who else we got? Tim Peer, Timothy Pierce, not Tim Pierce. Uh, I always say that. Uh, Humbucker Lover, how's it going, man? Uh, and I, I know we're going to have some questions for you, so I'm going to keep scrolling through. We got uh, Patrick Behar and Matthew Harrison, Chad Allen, so all uh, tons of people saying hi. Um, we've got a question here. Phil, any advice for finding people to play with? That's a tough one, man. Don't, <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. Here's here's <laughs> wait. Here's the start though. Don't be too picky in the beginning, because um, what happens is if if you're at a, I don't know what level you're at. I don't know if you're an advanced level or a beginner level. Say you're intermediate. Let's just say you're an intermediate level player, and you're looking for. Uh, I think you either want to be with equal equal level players or better. Um, I met a, I was in a band one time and, and the singer, songwriter, producer was the worst musician in the band. And he said, that's exactly how he wanted it. Cause it made him work harder and learn. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, I never, never really thought of that. Um, but yeah, find, find people that you can grow with too, I would think. Um, but if you're, if you're asking me in an actual technical sense, like, do you put an ad in a paper or hang? <laughs> flyers at music stores and rehearsal rooms those three things 
<laughs> and of course, I mean, now once you reach a certain level, you got word of mouth and of course, you know, all that stuff. And then of course, uh, and I've, I've heard others talk about this, even Pete Thorne has talk, talked about it. You know, you have to live in an area where there's going to be other musicians, right? Yeah. Um, exactly. If you're but in an area it's everywhere now too, you know, when that's you think true. about it, that's you know, true. obviously LA is Mecca, but I mean, you know, there's people everywhere. Um, I, I also believe that uh, it's important to get along as people because if, if the guy bugs you, <laughs> like he's got or she's got idi idiosyncrasies that drive you nuts, it, it'll only get worse. Mm -hmm. So that's, there's a, hey, it's been great, um, but don't come back. <laughs> 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 exactly yeah <laughs> that's cool yeah it, it, you know it being in a band i've done it for years and uh not professionally but uh, just playing with people and even then it's still it's friendships and it's like a marriage and you got to have compromise and uh you got to get along with each other it's got to be cool otherwise you yeah, know like dan dan the drill daniel spree he's my bass player and i, I call him my left wing for life anytime i go on stage i want him to be on bass and we go through drummers <laughs> like Kleenex and, and it's like whoever's on drums, he's the musical glue between me and any drummer. And I feel it. And, and not only that is I want to be in the room with him as much as possible. Like he's such a funny guy and we get along and we laugh and we're just bros. So making music with your bro is the best. Yeah. I agree with that. <laughs> That's, yeah. that's true. Dan the Drill. Dan the Drill. So tell us. Tell us about your band, The Drills. But, uh, we're working on our fourth record. It's taking forever because... Uh, it's kind of busy. I know, right? <laughs> kind of I mean, yeah. Playing in front of, you know, 50,000 yeah, or Joby more people. Yeah, changed my life and threw a wrench in, into The Drills. Um, no, we, it took, it took two, two years to record because there's 12 drummers on it. And... And uh, they all tour, you know, when you guys you have guys like, um, you know, Tommy Lee and Abel Boyle Jr. and Taylor Hawkins and, and Ray Luzier and Kenny Aronoff and Gary Novak and all these guys. That's awesome. It's really turned into this huge endeavor. But, and to explain the situation of this, and we filmed everything so we could eventually make a documentary, but I mean, you know, some the drummer would walk into the room and me and Dan and the drummer as a band would go through the rearrangement and, oh, well, let's try this in the second chorus. And, hey, let's, you know, even Taylor was like, hey, let's do this before the third chorus. And I go, yeah, but just go fucking crazy at the end. And then, <laughs> and then we lay it down and it was like, wow, thanks, man. All right, cool. Woo, high fives. And then another drummer would walk in and some guys would walk in with uh, a snare and cymbals and sticks and, you know, some guys would just walk in with a, a pair of sticks and a bag of Jack in the box and we would just rock. <laughs> and when the idea was because, you know, your buddy is, you know, the bass player and I'm sorry, I forgot his name. Dan. Dan. So, I mean, you and Dan, that's the tight knit impetus of the band and you're, you're cool. You're just, is that how it was? You decided well, yeah, you wanted to just have guest, guest drummers or? Yeah. Well, we're the common denominator on, on every track, especially, you know, my guitar, my voice, Dan's bass, Dan's voice, and um, and that's what kept it. Because a lot of the a lot of the writing that I did was to cater to the drummers. Like when I, like when I thought of Tommy Lee, I thought of a Tommy Lee track, and um, I actually wrote this one track for Matt Chamberlain, who, who just at the time just got off the road with Soundgarden, and he came in, and I go, "Oh, Matt, you got to play in the song," and he's like, "Oh my God, great," and. Stuff like that, you know, when I thought of Abe, I thought of an Abe track. It's I so just saw it, 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 he's such a teddy bear. I love that. Yeah, guy. man. I'm just, I was, I was, I, I saw Paul McCartney in Detroit. Oh, actually, man. Like a couple weeks ago and uh, wow. opening their new hockey arena there. Oh, and, wow. Uh, and, uh, oh, yeah. I've seen him a couple His times. Whole band. His whole band is oh, awesome. Oh, it's crazy. I watched that. We watched the whole thing and we're just like, wow, what a yeah. band. <laughs> great band, great band, great guys. Yeah. So and, and and to and just keep make it uh, just to finish it. Uh, the it just became like uh, 
needing it needed that common denominator of the two guys because each track is so different and each drummer is different and the documentary will be really riveting because of that you get to see how these guys hit mm. and you get to see how their personalities reflect or how they drum and uh it's it's really it was a really amazing experience that's awesome yeah because yeah. you know it's i've seen it done with guitar players and singers right guest yeah. guitar players guest singers but i don't think i've ever seen it done with guest drummers well and and the, and the cool thing about that is is uh you're right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i don't you know i don't think so i don't think that's a, a whole album with different drummers that's cool that's super cool because you get really get to uh, i'm a drummer also so i'm thinking to myself wow. every song's going to have a different feel and wait do you, you know, drum left-handed as well Oh man, my drumming is so messed up. Um, I'm I'm actually lefty up on top and righty on the bottom. So wow. like my my feet are righty, but so I play kind of like Simon Phillips. Yeah. You know, open. Yeah. Instead of wow. crossed over, because if I was crossed over, I'd be playing the opposite way, right? So right. It'd be like this. Yeah. Phil so Collins. I, yeah, exactly. But I but instead I just I play open like that. So my fills are kind of like I heard that. Um, uh, uh, Ringo Starr is like this. He he leads with his left hand instead of le leading with his right hand. So his fills yeah. are kind of unique. Yeah. And mine would tend, tend I probably tend to hit my hit my stick on the rim more than I should because <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm not you know I'm not going around the way I should you know. But right. Uh, yeah, that's the way I played. So that's just the way I learned. Yeah, yeah, just the way I learned. And now I've been a lefty on weird things my whole life. So uh, I write lefty, but I play all sports righty. Wow. Wow. That's yeah, strange. Really it is strange. strange. I yeah. I swing lefty, but fork, pen, everything. But I, hockey, baseball, golf, lefty. Crazy. Really? Yeah. Really? Oh, that that is odd. Yeah. I it's, know. Yeah, I don't know what that. Yeah, it's strange. I don't so. know what to call that. <laughs> yeah, well, it's Crazy. ambidextrous. It's like a, they, I think they call well, it. Wait, ambidextrous. wait, left, left. In hockey, yeah, left-handed stick is, yeah. So your left hand is the one down on the stick right yeah, yeah. so when well you, that's the way i play at hockey too <laughs> <laughs> really yeah i was lefty but i'm total righty but thought yeah. of the thought but you control this whole stick with your your right hand so yeah. i i, I kind of understand that right but i i baseball bat though no has to no i can't not lefty <laughs> yeah i'm, I'm right wow. yeah that's yeah, it's strange but uh yeah, and guitar for whatever reason is the same thing like with the hi hat because that's my rhythm hand. Yeah, you know, so I kind of felt like that's the way the rhythm, you know. So this really needs to be the fretting hand, even though everybody was telling me, "Don't learn the guitar this way." <laughs> <laughs> You'll be in hell the rest of your life trying to buy yeah. guitars. Yeah. I think there are a few players that are lefty that play righty, and it was just because it was cheaper to buy a right-handed guitar. I mean, yeah, when you're starting out find them and it just just yeah it's it's tough being a lefty now i've got too many guitars i don't think i have a problem but <laughs> right but yeah but back then it was you know it's cool but uh but hey let's take some more questions enough about cool. me um oh we got a question dave free friedman shirts chad allen is asking they're coming i know i keep saying that but they're coming uh you know what they here here's the here's the here's the thing you think we I want can, to be wearing we a PB a, shirt? We, we can get we can get our Friedman shirts. Yeah, that's exactly. You're wearing a goddamn PB. <laughs> what the hell am I wearing a PB um, shirt for? <laughs> and um, I can you know get the shirts from my normal supplier, which I've had in the past. But then I got to send them all out and stuff to people. And and frankly, I, I need a service to just do that for for. Hey, I, I've learned of a couple of different services lately. I'll uh, yeah? I'll share with you later. Yeah, I, I I found a couple too uh, that I just was looking at recently, like a, 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 that seemed pretty cool. But okay, I, I just want them to deliver. I just they process the whole thing, send you a check. Yeah, and who who's got and who's got room to have stock time. every size, right? Yeah, I just don't have time. You know? Yeah, and, and it'll be better for everyone if that happens. Yes, <laughs> they can get it easier, and you know it's going to get there. Cool. Yeah. I mean, it's, instead of I, hey, I forgot to send it out. Sorry, <laughs> I got <right>. busy. <laughs> oh, that's me too. Yeah. I need yeah. drill CDs. I'm a dick. I'm like, oh my god, I'm so busy. I'm so behind. People are like, I've been waiting four months for a CD, and I'm like, I'm really sorry. Can I throw in a shirt for free? And it's like, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And then you're not making money. 
Because you're so giving that, people. See, you will do that, and then I hopefully you found a spot too to park all your stuff, and yeah. then it, they just send it out for you. Yes. Right. For a nominal fee. A nominal fee. There's got to be services like that. Oh yeah, there is. Sure. They exist. Yeah, yeah. Um, Eddie Van Halen just struck a deal with one. Seriously? Oh, th that's the Eddie Van Halen store. Uh, yeah, I just saw the, struck a deal with. Uh, I've already now forgotten the company, but it, it's, a, <laughs> it's a it's a merch fulfillment company that 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 does that. Because huh. uh, I looked them up after I read the news bleep. I'm like, wait, who are they? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I got well, you. Well, if they're good enough for Eddie. Yeah. Well, there already was the Van Halen store, which is interesting. So I was confused by that. But yeah. I, I, I guess they're different. They're owned by who knows. Um, we've got a question here, Dave, off the subject. Uh, this guy, uh, TWF7847. And I think I know what the answer is. Uh -oh. uh, what, what's the name of the sushi restaurant you like to go to in LA near your home? By the way, I love my dirty Shirley pedal. Wait, how do she, you? How, wait, I don't have one of those no, either. I, how do you know about the sushi restaurant? That's the first question I have. <laughs> well, I, and is it the one I know? And is it the Chiba. one that Steve Lukather goes to? Yes, Chiba. Chiba, that's I love the, that place. Yeah. Well, I Chiba, think it's on to that. Boulevard. That is the best sushi place in LA. I'm pretty positive. In fact, maybe some of the best in the world. Yeah. So, to go. gotta go. So, Phil, you've been there, obviously. Yeah, actually, with Steve Lukather. <laughs> yep. Oh, nice. <laughs> And his son, or just with Steve? It was just Steve. Okay. I see him there with every once in a while. I run into him there with his son. Yeah. Uh, Trev's awesome, too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Chiba, C H I B A, in North right. Hollywood, California. I'll be going when I'll definitely be going when I hit LA soon. And um, Shig, Shig, if you're the owner, if by chance you ever hear this, uh, I need a free roll for that one. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you got the Chiba sushi plug. Yeah. Um, this is actually an interesting question that just popped up from Mantis J. And I don't know if there's an answer for it, but he wants to know, or she wants to know, um, what's the most responsive, sensitive to picking attack cleans up best with volume pot that lets all the guitars sound good through an amp that you tried. And I, I think that's what they're asking. What's a good volume pot that has like a good sweep that, you know, goes from clean to anybody know? Or um, what? Well, I know there's a difference. I know Dave knows because he's a tech guy, but I, know, I heard, I personally heard a huge difference between a linear pot and an, an audio pot. Yeah. And the um, audio pot, like a lot of guys feel like they have to put some kind of capacitor or resistor on exactly. their volume pot. And if you have a good audio pot, you don't need to do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't. For it to I, clean up nice and clean and stuff. Well, you know what it depends upon though? It depends a lot. And, and you know, I actually don't know technically why. And in fact, a couple of people have been stumped on this. It depends on your pickups too. Yes. Certain pickups, if you don't have a compensation on the pot, they don't, they, they get dark, really dark, and it just yeah. doesn't, it's not good, you know? Mm -hmm. and and, <laughs> but, but like our pickups, yeah, 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 hold on. Uh, <laughs> I know the pickups in the Friedman guitars and some Motor City pickups that I've dealt with, and even Rob at Arcane's pickups that I know Phil deal, does with. You just roll the pot down, it's just perfectly fine. It, yeah. Maybe it's ever so slightly darker, but I think that's a good thing. But and I mean, slight. You got it, the amp, if you yeah. have, if you're playing through a great amp, I agree with that. Then again, it's it all works together, yeah. and it's not the, a magic. You know, you don't need a, a wizard to explain it. But because I I, rea I realized that when one time I was filling in for another guy, and I had plugged into a Marshall JCM 2000, and the guitar that I used cleaned up in my amp beautifully. But into the JCM 2000, I turned down, and it was a. Mm -hmm. And it was like, why is it doing that? And then I, I, I figured out it was the amp. So mm -hmm. this is, you know, it's you got you need a great amp, a great pickup, and and an audio pot. There you go. Yeah, and you know, and and the thing is, is as soon as you put any kind of compensation on the pot, it ruins the taper of the pot. Exactly. So if you're one that plays with the pot a lot and on on different spots, it's you know, with a nice good audio pot, it's a nice even roll all the way down, and it it, it seems right. With anything compensating across it the pot like comes on real quick from zero. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and it comes on really quick. 
and that ruins all the in-between stuff's gone. It's like you, you can't – There's no, your in-between is like, you know, in the first quarter of the pot, and you're just like you can't even find the where it is, you know. It's, I, yeah. I'll go old school on it, and you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I don't – I guess we, you know, there's a, what we're saying is, there's a combination of things, pick up the pot, your, the amp, but is there, is there a particular pot that you would recommend Dave that, you know, like if someone's going to put one in a guitar, I mean, is it Borns? Is it, you know, just a regular, uh, you old? know, I don't, I don't, I don't, the, those, those pots that come in the Van Halen guitars, I don't really care for them. Me either. Um, they're, they're, they're too, too they're loose, too, too loose, too easy to turn. Tapers a little weird when you first turn them on too. Wow, and, and, I didn't it's, know this. It's, it's really weird, and um, you know, I just I think a lot of the pots that you see are CTS pots that a lot of the you know high end people are using. The CTS pot has always been good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't even know. I think it's a CTS pot that we're using in the Friedman guitars. Um, I'm not. I know it's not a Borns, so it's got to be a CTS. There's there's only so many choices, by the way. Yeah. Right. It's, yeah. It's imagine. pretty much. It's pretty much, it's either a Borns guitar pot or a CTS guitar pot. Maybe on the way, on the cheap, cheap guitars, maybe an Alpha guitar pot or something. But it, it's, it's pretty much one of those three. So it's, hmm. okay. I know Dunlop's got some new pot for guitars that's supposed to be really cool. I haven't checked it out yet. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. That's cool. All right. We're talking about pot. Hey, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, my mind went off. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm going to jump in here and see if there's any other questions. Back to the uh, pot discussion. No. Back to the yeah. <laughs> Fifty Flipside says, "I have personally watched Phil X's BE100 at least fifty times, and I cry when he, when he plays Hendrix at the end." Wow, that's wow. I, he cries I, for you. He cries, man. Thanks, man. Uh, Fifty flip side. All right, that's cool. Actually, I, I have I actually have watched that video of you demoing the amp, and it's freaking awesome. When you rip into the Van Halen stuff, I was just like, I have to have that amp, and I have to have it. Yeah, now. but you know what's funny? I wanted that guitar, but after that video, somebody bought that guitar the next day. Yeah, they did. <laughs> oh, really? Guitar. They totally beat me to it. Oh no! And you know, and you know, and and uh, that was a Luxtone guitar, and you know, it was. Uh, and, and you know, they made a bunch of duplicates of that guitar too, <laughs> the same look and the same pickup configuration and everything. See, I didn't that know one, that. That one had a um, that one when you played that guitar, it had a, a Motor City black belt pickup, not second degree black belt, so which is like an old PAF sort of thing. And wow. those same pickups are in your. Explorer that you got from my partner Rob. That's what they are, right? Yeah, that guitar is sick, dude. Yeah, that, so those are those are the same pickups that was in that white guitar. Wow. So a little bit of history that you probably just had no idea about. I was wondering what pickup that was. That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Are they hot pickups? No, no, really? no, no. They're, they're like old PAFE. Yeah, but the uh, the, the okay. voice, it's a certain it's way, they just certain so cool rich sound. And cool. Yeah, really good. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Um, let's see. Any chance uh, Cabot Noonless says, any chance of the Buxom Boost pedal comes out with an EQ bypass? Oh, he's been asking me to ask you oh, about Oh, with that. a foot switch? Yeah. Like, or a or foot do, switch? I think on a foot switch, yeah. That's what he's saying. Yep. Let's see how it does. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, uh, let's, uh, let's see, Dave. How would, how would you do that? Would you just put another switch in or would you put yeah, a, no, well, it'd a, have to, it'd have to be an expression? It has to be a bigger oh. box. Yeah, and then yeah, no, it has to be a bigger box. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, you could do it with an expression, maybe. Interesting thoughts. Yeah, see, <laughs> this is really talking tech. Um, <laughs> yes, maybe we'll see. We'll see. You know, you know. I, hey, I was just looking. I was looking on YouTube. I was just curious because I haven't looked at it in a really long time. How many views that video got of the BE one hundred that you did for us? Mm -hmm. And we're we're at um, four hundred and seventy five thousand views. Really? Wow. Yeah. Well, we've got comments I, in I, here that that say so that I, you. I, I owe you sushi. I think. <laughs> Shiba sushi. So next time you're in town, 
We're going to Sheba. We're going to Sheba on me. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's a good video. I mean, well, I've got comments here that say, uh, uh, Roll No says, Phil X sold me on the BE best demo, demo ever. Wow. Uh, Craig Lavender says, Phil X sold me on the X amp. Wow. Uh, nice. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of good stuff. Um, I sold me on the X amp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got I to gotta hear one. I mean, I've heard you. I've heard an NVIDIA. The one that you did with Michael Nielsen was a good The X amp's great. I love the X amp because it's so sl simple. You know, yep. that's, personally, that's what I would like too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need five channels and everything. I just yeah one good channel, mm -hmm. the volume knob in your guitar. It's That's true. basically it, man. Totally. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Well, speaking of that, um, we got a good question from Patrick Behar who's asking, Phil, uh, can you give us a rig rundown on what you're using for Bon Jovi? I can. Um, it's very simple. Um, it's uh, anything that's on my board uh, is stuff that I need for Bon Jovi because usually I use like a couple of different overdrives just for flavor, you know. Um, uh, but you know, the talk box I'm using an MXR, I use the exotic Watt, which I really dig. Mm -hmm. um, I'm using an H9 for like a Leslie effect and a, and a delay, and I'm using uh, I believe it's a Digitech Hardwire chorus pedal. And that's it. I mean, my overdrives are a, a kind of like a modded, way huge saucy box. Hmm. Right, right. For, I need that, like, so I'm running the amp so that it's my rock tone. And then when I need a little more, obviously, for something like Raise Your Hands or the solo to Living on a Prayer, I use this uh, LAA custom box, which is an overdrive which is a prototype. So both overdrives that I'm using aren't available. <laughs> <laughs> One, but the prototype is coming out as... Is that, that, is that your prototype pedal that I've seen online? Yes, it's LAA Custom from Italy. And, and um, Jazz is Dead or something like that? No, it's called Fuck Jazz Overdrive. Fuck Jazz. <laughs> and it's got a switch on it. And, and when the switch is down, it's for great amps. And when the switch is up, it's for shitty amps. <laughs> and it actually I says it, it on the box. So, um, but it's basically, I always, always liked having a treble and bass control over just having a tone control in an overdrive box. Mm -hmm. So it's got that. So it's gain, treble, bass, and get, uh, volume. Uh, out, you know, like a, yeah, output. Um, and then um, I don't know what George Tripp did to that way huge box, but he, it, it made it way more open sounding. Then the um, so that's what I kick in for like Lost Highway, which is off the country record. It mm -hmm. doesn't need a lot of gain. It just needs a little more than the amp's giving me, and uh, and then I, I kick that in for solos like that. Um, and the amp is the X amp with a, a four twelve. The only thing I don't like, I'm not happy about, is there's no cabinets on stage. And not only is there no cabinets on stage, the cabinet is in an ISO box under the stage. Uh, yeah, that kind of... So I'm not feeling my pant leg move when I hit the E chord, and I yeah. can't get a... Ooh! No feedback, <laughs> yeah, 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 no feedback. There's no magnets oh, really? talking. Uh, that's, Aside that's... from that, though, it's, it's funny how I tweaked everything, though. I, I tweaked everything, because we get a stick. We get, like, a flash drive of the show the next day or the night of. Mm, cool. And for the first first two weeks of the tour in February, um, I would watch the video the next day, and I I would just oh, okay that guitar sounds great with that s song, and that guitar sounds great with this song, and and that overdrive sounds a little bright. So I show up at soundcheck the next day, and I turn the tone down a little bit, and then the next day it sounded perfect. So it's I just hate in ears. So my yeah. You know, and I, I forgot how much I hate in-ears because between the last tour and the tour that we just did in South America, I did a couple of drill shows. And I was back to having a, a loud amp behind me and having my voice in a monitor screaming at my face. And I go, oh, my God, I, I, this is so awesome. And then, <laughs> and then I go to Santiago, Chile, and I get in-ears again. And right. oh, oh, it's, so, it's so heartbreaking. That's tough. But, 
That's what you do, man. That's what you do at the big show. Woo! That's fine. Yeah. The, the, and the ISO box doesn't help anything. The what? The ISO box doesn't help anything. Oh, my God. Yeah, you know, it's better that they just stick a cabinet down under the stage and mic it, you know, and just leave it open or put a packing blanket over it or something because it'll sound something. better. Yeah. You know, Actually, the these ISO boxes box. aren't bad. Because yeah. it, it, when, it, when I hear it the next day, I'm, I'm happy. I love – I wish my guitar sounded like it does on the, neck, like on the flash drive <laughs> in my ears. It's just it's so close to yeah. your ear. You're not getting any room. You're not getting anything like that. So Can't right. they put a little, uh, little stuff on it in your ears for you? Well, they can put the audience in, but or have a you little, ever been to a Bon Jovi show? No, yeah, I understand. <laughs> no, but like a little, <laughs> little ambient, a little, little a reverb or something. Oh no, I do get I I get a little reverb. Yeah, like otherwise it's really dry and then you're oh god. Yeah, I yeah. love hearing the audience, but you, for some reason the the close the people that are closest to the audience mics are the ones that sing out of tune, and then it just throws you off. You're like, oh my god, I can't hear my note. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's funny. Yeah. Does it has that happened before? Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I just called you out on that. Sorry about that. I know, right? No, it, it actually <laughs> did. I, 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 uh, I try. Hey, can I get the audience? Because I want to hear the audience. The audiences are great. The only time I hear the audience is when we, when we're done the show, and I pull my in ears out, and I finally hear the <laughs> massive sound of this audience, whether it's twenty thousand people or a hundred thousand people, and it's like invigorating. But it's it's locked out until that point, so it kind of sucks. Uh, yeah, I can I can imagine. Um, I've never used an ISO box. What what else does it, does it do? I mean, is it really just uh? No, it's just the amp is you know at the at a volume that is optimal for a, a hundred watt head. Gotcha. And it, be, it being uh, there's no stage volume is basically what it is. But the thing is, is the mics on it. So you got the box, you got the cabinet, you got a little reflective wall. And you got two mics that don't move that are in the same spot every night. And then they just plug in to the outside the box. And it's, it's like the same, exactly the same every night. Yeah. Well, it's better than, I guess, using like a cabinet emulator or these things that they're doing now where you don't even have a cabinet. Well, I, I've heard great things about Dave's cam, cabinet emulator, but uh, I, haven't, I haven't seen one yet. <laughs> so let's get the... The Buxom Boost and the the cabinet emulator. Well, the cabinet emulator. Let's is, get those is, in the mail, vape, Dave. Is vaporware <laughs> right now until that actually comes out. But right. the uh, I mean, it's in an amp, but it's not in a box yet. But it will be. Wait a minute! I've heard that it was in a box. From there, Tom. Who, who did Tom Abraham? From he's in here in Las Vegas, right? Yeah. Yeah. Allison Chains. He says, yeah, he gets you know, you know, yeah, yeah. He, he, we, there was a couple prototypes of it, and yeah, that, that uh, and, and he doesn't even have them, and he's been bugging me forever. He doesn't even have them. Did he have to give them no, back? Is that what happened? No, yeah, he gave them back. Yeah, uh, and, and uh, so see, uh, eventually, wait, he can Mark, get them. Mark, I'm yeah. just going to tell you right now. There's a whole bunch of stuff on Dave's workbench that we will never know about. <laughs> I know. No, you'll know about it eventually. It just it just like stacks up and it's like it just well, takes release forever. That release that then, release that then. Oh, that's like, funny. Uh, well, we've been talking since we started the show. The pickups are coming. Friedman pickups. Yeah. yeah. Well, we make them for the guitar, so of course some of the people have been asking for them. So yes. Yeah. But now we will see Friedman pickups for sale. Who's oh, making them? Oh, nice. We make them down at Grover Jackson's, so it's all wow. in house. So. Awesome. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. One of these days I'll get myself a Friedman guitar. Have you played one? Have I? Yeah. Yes. I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're um, awesome. There was a couple. There was a couple. You haven't, that, you haven't played any of the new ones. You've, you've played really old ones. Um, okay, well, next time I'm in town, I'll come and play the yeah. new ones. Um, <laughs> hey, we have a question from uh, Wario Blast. Uh, I think they, they, what they're asking, they says, it says, what did you bring from GitCon? But I think, what did, they, what did you buy from GitCon? Or what did you get from GitCon? Anything? Anything cool or any cool products? Um, there's, a, there's a little... Uh, wait. Oh, actually, Reverb had a booth there. Not a booth, a table. 
they had a table there, and it had this old, shallower, fuzzwa, and it was like, and when and it came from Reverb Amsterdam. So I had this box, and I tried plugged it into this amp, and it it was the ideal fuzzwa, like mm. you. It, it was amazing, and I don't think they make it anymore, and they wanted a lot for it. And I said, you know how you can put a bid in. So I said, I offer this, and they said, okay. And I go, well, this saves, shaves, uh, saves, saves shipping. I'll just right. put it in my – it's done. And they still – they owe me for shipping because I had to – you have to pay shipping. But anyways, they didn't have to ship it. But um, I bought that, and then there was a couple of – there was a, a, little, a little amp like that's 20 watts, but it doesn't have, it's, it just has two uh, preamp tubes in it. And it's, it's voiced like a, a JMP. Mm. And if, I mean, I don't think you could, it's great for like a practice situation. Yeah. Cause Dave won't make a little practice situation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll wait a minute. We, 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 we do have the, uh, the little pink taco 110 combo now which is a little tiny one really yeah see i don't know all this stuff uh, you got i don't even know about yeah i love the pink taco i have who doesn't one. <laughs> who doesn't <laughs> <laughs> that's you should have for a little practice thing yeah well i'm gonna have to get one of those too i think I'll i think you know come. you know a guy i know a guy you know a guy we can make that happen awesome yeah that's a great amp those are very cool. What you, you uh, played the combo, Mark? I I've heard it. I haven't played it. Okay. I, yeah, I have heard it. Um, it's I've the same. It. It's the same as the pink taco head. It's just a. It's just in a a small little cute, one ten, you know, combo box. So it open one, back or close. One back? little open back. One little ten inch speaker. It sounds cool. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Practice situation. Yeah. There you go. A cool uh, one. <laughs> uh, DJ Asterisk asks, Phil, how do you handle your P90s with high gain amps? That's easy. Oh. I don't use high gain amps. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, and periodically, <laughs> periodically, um, I will use, uh, you know, if I'm jamming, depending on the amp, if, if I'm jamming somewhere. But I always have, like, I take my guitar wherever I go because it's my dream guitar. So it's the Framus. Um, XG and it's got the P90 in it, mm -hmm. um, but I, I've never been in a situation, and maybe be, because I grew up playing and singing and always working my volume, and if you, there's only been a few situations where um, the hum was really bad, and one was in actually a studio, and and it wasn't because of the gain, it was just because there was TV satellite towers close to the studio so they go yeah you can't use single coils here and i'm like well that sucks so i had to switch to a humbucker guitar but mm. to answer the high gain thing i i i can usually tame that beast i, ne I never whether you're it's where you're facing or you have to find a quiet spot you know even when you play a strat you kind of find a, a quiet spot oh there it is and okay great i'm looking at the bathroom awesome it or, um, or 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 it's like if you if you were to lay on your back on the ground <laughs> with the guitar the opposite you know level right that's generally when it's quietest actually <laughs> that's funny I, I always joke around I go hold your guitar and then flip it flat and that's is it quiet there <laughs> somebody tell me that about basses so, yeah I mean yeah, so so thing. so so basically if you're gonna do a solo in the studio you're just gonna lay on your back great. I can try that. <laughs> um, yeah, but well, you know, with the P90s too, it's like there is the volume knob on your guitar, people. You know, you can you can you can roll it down in between things and roll it up. I know it seems to be a forgotten art, but yes. there is a volume knob on a guitar, and it's there for a reason. Yes. So people use it. I don't know. That seems like common knowledge for me. Growing well, up, for you know me, what? It's, the I, volume knob and rock amps and loud amps, and it's if you stop playing, you turn the volume knob off. You turn right. it back up when you start playing again. You turn exactly. it off when you stop playing again. You don't ever stand there with your guitar wide open. It's not going to work. 
<laughs> yeah, and it's, it's, it's bizarre. And, and it's I, funny, too, I, because another thing that I talk about is tone. Like when, I'm talk, when I do clinics and I'm talking to a lot of young players, it's not only working the volume of the guitar to get different tones, but it's like where you pick. Because if you, this is the bridge, and you pick close to the bridge, it's going to be bright. And when you pick closer to the nut, I mean, not the nut, but the, where the neck is, it's going to start a lot fatter. So, so you, know, you, have, you have a one pickup guitar, and you can pick close to the bridge, and it's this biting, cutting tone. Or, yes. hey, you pick right on, almost on the neck. It almost exactly. sounds like a neck pickup. Almost. So, unbelievable. Dynamics, people. Yes. Dynamics. I guess yes. maybe that maybe that has been lost with all the kids playing into modelers in their bedroom. Um, no, my favorite question was when I was doing a Fred Americana video, and I was just it was one good it was, it was just a really good guitar plugged into my old '50s Tone Master yeah. uh, from Magnatone, and and most of the questions were what pedal would give me that sound? It was like no pedal. Practice. Get that Turn it up. <laughs> Turn it up. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah. Well. Someone asked, can you get close to the Phil X amp with the runt? Yeah, you know, it's 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 kind of based um um wait a minute, what's the runt? I don't even know the runt. Runt is the runt? A fifty watt a fifty or twenty watt uh, slightly lower price point amp that we did. It's a PC board based amp, not a hand wire. Wow. And uh, the answer is yes. Do you have Phil's hands? <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other story. I, I, honestly, you know, like, I, you know, people ask, you know, can you get certain people's sounds? And, and I'm always kind of like, well, with a hand transplant, maybe. <laughs> oh, dude. I, I mean, like, no, really. I mean, like, like you – People, I mean, I've heard Eddie Van Halen play through a Line Six amp, and guess what? He sounds like Eddie Van Halen. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, not as good of a tone, but but well, no, it's funny. there's still the nuances of their playing that come through no matter what they play with, you know. And, exactly. And, and, and it's like uh, you know, you're going to plug into something you rent, you're going to turn the knobs until you get a close proximity to the tone mm -hmm. you like. And, you know, turn it up a little more, turn the gain down. Okay, well, yeah, okay, yeah, we got it, kind of. Yeah. Okay, that'll work. And you're going to well, play it. You're going to make it work with your hands. Mm -hmm. I, I was, um, when we were on the last tour, um, I would make, like, you know, you get bored in your hotel room and you don't feel like going out. So I'd have this little, the little, I don't even know what it is, the little black star or whatever. And, yeah. uh, and uh, I had it, I, I was in New York and it was like the whole wall is windows, but it has a ledge. So I put the little amp against the window and I, sh I was shredding. <laughs> and this guy's like, oh my God, that sounds amazing. Is that your Friedman? <laughs> like, yeah. I look it up to my hotel room every day. <laughs> it's just your hands down a certain way, of course. You yeah. know? Yeah, it's true. It's true. I mean, we've heard all you know the story. I mean, uh, with Ed and who was it? Was it Ted Nugent? Ted Nugent, so, yeah. Yeah. Plugs yeah. into Ed's rig and sounds like Ted. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the, I would the, be disappointed. to answer that question because I didn't really answer that question. Uh, the 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 Rot Dirty Channel has a similar. It's a similar Dirty Channel to the BE Dirty Channel. It's a similar Dirty Channel to the Single Channel Phil Amp. There is some things missing from each thing, but can you do a close prox? Yeah, you can get close probably. Again, with Phil's hands. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know what? I, I, I the way I because I have the Runt Twenty Phil also, and um, the the voicing. The way I would describe it is the voicing is very similar. You know, you hit an E chord, you hit an A. I mean, you, it, you're definitely hearing that throaty Friedman sound. I don't know how to, how else to describe it. It's kind of like the DNA throughout all your amps. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. at least that's kind of how I kind of think of it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, we have a question. From, go ahead, Dave. Go. It's, it's sort of like, uh, you know, you know, when I always say like, uh, talk about Taco Bell or something, right? So, you know, 
What, what do you like to get at Taco Bell? It's it's really all the same. It's just packaged differently. <laughs> you know, it, it tastes. It, you know, the taco tastes the same as the burrito. It's just the, it just this one's got a soft wrapping and this one's got a crunchy. You know, that's uh, true. Uh, it's so, the same shit inside, so, right? So yes, the crunchy tastes a little different because it's crunchy, and that one tastes. You know, but basically it's the same DNA. <laughs> wow. There you go. That's cool. Uh, we had Humbucker Lover had a question, which um, I can just tell you quickly. He wants to know an update on the Grover G2 uh, guitars. He's still making them if you want to contact Grover and get a guitar from him. Right, Dave? Yeah, I think so. Right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so let's see. Oh, you know, someone mentioned the RS Guitar Works Super Pots. I'd actually heard of RS Guitar Works making good uh, pots. Yeah, so that, that's something. Uh, it's probably still made by one of the typical pot manufacturers. So uh, is it, know, is it only, like there's tube? really only so many pot manufacturers out there. Is it like tubes? Kind so of, yes. Like, yeah, rebranded almost, and different things. I'm yeah. not saying that they don't have a custom taper pot made or something. They probably do. Uh, but you, you can you can talk to CTS and have a custom taper pot made. So I it see. reacts in a certain curve. So it um tapers a certain way okay uh, you have to buy a lot of them but yeah you can do it hey we got a, a question from rock and chippy alex king i believe right i know alex what's up alex <laughs> hey alex what's going on alex uh he says do you think you'll be able to bring more rock into future bon jovi albums no <laughs> <laughs> Done. Answers. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great, but I don't know. Probably, yeah, not. probably not going to happen. No. Okay. That was a good question there. Yeah. Thanks, Alex. Um, now let me back in on the uh, the freaking forum, dude. Sorry, how to say that? <laughs> uh, Dave, you're not going to laugh. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's see. Um, who else? I had to remove somebody, by the way. What? Remove someone from the chat? Yeah. Really? Yeah, they're getting a little... What did uh, they say? Uh, it was just... Uh, I won't get into it. Um, you have to now. <laughs> come on. Now, come on. <laughs> Time to oust them. Somebody, they, wait, so, somebody thought said Phil X is a douche. There, there were no. It wasn't just about you. It was just they were just making stupid comments. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I had a, actually two people. So it was wow. getting a bit unruly. Um, so wow, uh, you handled yourself really well. I had thanks. no idea. Good. I'm glad because I was like worrying I wasn't paying attention to everything you were saying. So <laughs> I missed it. I wasn't paying attention enough to. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, there's a good question here, Dave. Uh, any updates on the BE50 Deluxe? I know. Uh, he says they're not on Sweetwater yet. I've heard people say that. Well, PE50 um, Deluxe. Yeah, there's another amp too. Uh, yeah, you're you're way behind. The, the, way you know behind. Phil, maybe you should go on their website. <laughs> <laughs> you're absolutely right. Or or maybe pay attention to Facebook posts and things. No. Oh my God. <laughs> um, as if you have nothing better to do. Uh, uh, B50 Deluxe. Well, we'll be at Sweetwater. Uh, official release is March, or not March, sorry. Uh, uh, November 10th, I think. Don't mm. quote me on that. Meaning that it'll go live in the website on that. Wow. That's, that's soon. So, yeah, that's in a minute here. So You want to tell Basically, us? We're just, we're just trying to keep catch up to send them enough amps so they can actually go live with it. Right. So. Because, hey, we go live. We got these amps. Okay, great. Oh, wait, we don't have any. <laughs> that doesn't work. Yeah. No. So, well, I, no, I think people thought it was going to be on the website right away. Wait, so. what, what, uh, well, maybe I did. What, but what's Deluxe? Yeah, tell us the features. Deluxe is a different clean channel, a BE channel with a gain and master with one EQ. Then the HB channel has its own gain and master also. Oh. And also you got some stuff in the power amp section, like a, a thump knob, which is a little low-end thump kind of thing, uh, you know, resonance, depth, whatever they call it in different amps. 
And uh, you've never had that before, right? Uh, I have it on one other amp that we do, the Bill Kelleher Butter Slacks amp. Okay. Greatest name ever. Butter Slacks. Butter Slacks. This is a good name. Love good it. story behind it, too. Well, tell us. <laughs> well, we, we were like, he, he, he goes, I want to call my amp Butter Slacks. Like, what? What's Butter Slacks? And he goes, well, a long time ago, me and my buddy they used to hang out with, you know, when way before Mastodon and everything. We were just walking down, the, uh, you know, he, he came in my house and he just blurted out of his mouth, hey, what's up, Butter Slacks? You know, kind of <laughs> like, what's up, x Lax kind of thing, that old, like, thing, right? So he just said, what's up, Butter Slacks? And uh, um, so he goes, he goes, I just loved it. So, so he goes, I called my band at Butter Slacks. He had a band called Butter Slacks, wow. uh, like an early band and stuff. And that's been his nickname ever since. So that's what he chose to call it. I just like the name. I think it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's great. That is a good name. So, all right. So were there, were there any other features to the uh, BE Deluxe? Uh, well, the thumb knob, and then it has a, a negative feedback knob, which kind of varies the amount of gain in the power section and kind of just the response of the power amp. Wow. Um, has a typical saturation switch that's on the other amp and a half power switch that so goes down to 25 watts. Holy shit. Yeah. That's for the 50, and then there'll be a 100-watt version of it, too. Wow. And is the the 100-watt Deluxe going to replace the BE at some point? I think you mentioned that, Probably right? the BE 100 Deluxe will replace the BE 100, yes. So I have a tech question. Yeah. When you have a 50-watt amp and you're running two power tubes, right? EO 34s? Yeah. So when you cut it to 25 watts, what's... what's what am I doing? Yeah. Well, not, not uh, you know... In specifically, in specifically in that amp, uh, the only... Real way to do it is it's a pento triode switch. It's called. I might have seen those on some other amps at time. Okay, like a silver um, jubilee. It's how you wire? Yeah, sort of like silver jubilee has. Yeah. Okay. It's sort of how you wire the power tubes, and it reduces the power. It also maybe you know it also is a little squishier in that mode. But hey, it's twenty five watts. You'd expect it to be. Yeah. Um, and a little the high end is a little rolled off, and the base is a little rolled off too. But again, you'd expect it to be. You can kind of dial the rest of the amp in to kind of compensate for that. Right, like the thumb um, switch. Yeah, the, yeah, turn the thump up more. Turn the presence up more. Hey, there's dials. <laughs> um, you know, and then the 100 watt amp will have the same feature, but it'll just be a 50 watt switch. So the typical two tube out kind of 50 watt switch. Right. That's awesome. I know there's a lot of interest in it. Definitely online. Yes. In fact, yes. <laughs> Sweet Sweetwater's like, keep off the social media. <laughs> oh, really? Because well, their, their cause phones they are actually, ringing. Well, they want to have the amps for the launch. So that makes sense. I, I understand. So yeah. hang on, guys. Don't bug them too much. It's coming, okay? Don't bother them. But you'll, you'll, you can get it. it November 10th. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, uh, and don't quote me on the November 10th. I'm pretty sure that was the date that he was told to me, but. Uh, I, I never you. said anything. Probably shouldn't cool. even said that. <laughs> um, we got a comment. Zach Moon says, Phil X, you rock. Thanks, man. Um, Scott MacArthur, anyone else into TrueSart guitar, uh, guitars? I've never tried them. Uh, he says, I know Phil has demoed a few of them into for Fred and Americana. Yeah. They were, um, for me, they were hit and miss. Hmm. Like I played some that were like amazing and then played some other ones that were like, mm. but they did introduce me to arcane pickups. I think Rob at arcane makes amazing pickups. So that was something I got out of Triss art. That was yeah, awesome. Rob, Rob does. Rob's, I've known Rob forever, way yeah. before pickups. <laughs> and, cool. uh, uh, true are, are cool, really cool looking guitars. I've had a couple that have been amazing. Uh, not personally owned, but I've played a couple that have been amazing, and then a couple. I, I agree with Phil. Cool. But a lot of guitars are that way, you know. It's not. Yeah. You know, it's. Oh yeah, even you know, even the big companies, the big companies yeah. are the worst. You know, like Gibson, yeah. they could have a two guitars serial number like two apart, and one is amazing, and then the one other one is awful. a dud. 
Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's what bugs me is that a kid will buy that dud because Jimmy Page plays Les Pauls and he won't even know that he's got a dud and he paid like four grand or something. So that, mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a pet peeve with that. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, well, yeah, you don't know any better, yep. It stinks if you're going to get a dud, that's for yeah. sure. Um, hey, by the way, how was, uh, when you were at GitCon, how was the, uh, the Framus and Warwick factory? How was that? Was that pretty Well, I've cool? been there like seven or eight times now because I'm a Framus guy and uh, I'm also a, a design consultant. Mm. Um, I don't have to wear a tie or anything, but it's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's an amazing place. And everybody that went agreed that it's like, it's like Disneyland for guitar players. And then at the same time, you know, I was there doing, I had a meeting with the, the head luthier because uh, I have another XG coming out for NAMM so I can take on the tour next year. And um, they do so many things finish-wise that are unbelievable that I've never seen on any, with, with any other company. Hmm. And then, you know, other guys, other guys, all the good guys that were there, they, they played my XG and they were like, oh my God, this is great. Because my, it's a really, really fat neck, mm. but it's a comfortable fat neck. It's not like, oh, I can't play this thing. It's like everybody mm. that picks it up, you know, wow, it's so big, but oh my God, it feels so nice. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's kind of really cool when, when you're around guys that, you know, play so many different guitars all the time and then they pick up yours and go wow this, this kicks ass and warwick you know they they have 200 bass gods using warwick basses it's amazing mm -hmm. so it's a it's a great place great people awesome that's great yeah and i heard the story you were telling about how your your guitar came about and everything so if anybody wants to check those videos out from the GitCon, you can check those out. Um, I have to say, all those GitCon videos are really cool because it just seems like everybody's just hanging out. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. You know, it, it's like, it's like it, you know, it was almost like we were drinking coffee and eating like pound cake or something. Just everybody's just talking <laughs> and it, keeping it real and cool and and just geeking out all in this, you know, being nerds. It's the new yeah. nerd. Yeah, Pete, was, Pete, Pete came away with the same way. I mean. When when he was leaving to go, he was just kind of like, "Oh my God, I don't know what this is going to be like, and what the heck's going to go on here, and I got to drive a car in Germany, and and on all this stuff," and and he was like, "I don't know, I don't even know." And yeah. then he goes, he comes back, he's like, "That was great." <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people went into it not knowing, even. Not I wasn't going, but I mean, just just uh, watching it. Like I was just like, what's what's this going to be like? Are they going to be doing? Is it going to be like Nam, or is it going to be you know like? So I, it was cool to see what what came out of it. No, I don't, I don't, is it? I don't think it's totally defined yet. Yet, like I, think I don't think so. Next year might be a little more defined than. Yeah, no. but uh, I mean, for something that you know, you always like you said earlier, Mark. When you do something for the first time, there's always like glitches and stuff. But yeah. yeah. Aside from um, the guitar tones could have been better, um, it, it seemed to run pretty smooth. That's and cool. then um, and then I made new friends, man. Like these aren't guys that that play in bands. These are guys that are on YouTube, like reviewing and talking licks and teaching mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And everybody just got along so great. It was really, really. What, what awesome. about that? What about that guy from Leapfrog Studios? Does all the metal covers? It's unbelievable. I and was he like, sent me, he out sent me a his... track. I'm going to do a solo on it. Oh, oh do no. it. That's going to be great. I'm doing That's a solo cool. on one of his tracks. He's great, man. He's so great. You should film yourself while doing it and send it to him. It'll, it'll I am. I'm going to, I don't know, yeah. get to wear a costume or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe a bunny costume like he did in that one. He's, I I mean, these that guys, one he's, he's got an imagination, man. And yeah. he, does, he has to come up with something new every week. So his brain's constantly going. It's awesome. Yeah, well, it, well yeah. He's on. Yeah, he's making a living at it. A very yeah. good one. Yes. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. You, if you build up a big enough channel. By the way, people, hit subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Hit subscribe, people. Yeah, it's it. the subscribe button. Do it. Um, oh, you know, Phil, we got a good question here. I don't know if it's uh, the standard uh, speakers, but one, uh, Craig Lavender wants to know, can you have Phil talk about what speakers he likes in his X-Amp cab? I don't even know. What cab are you using? I'm using uh, the cabinet you sent me. 
Uh, I think it's V30s in it. Uh, um, maybe no, maybe if it's a standard cabinet, we didn't specify, then it's probably Greenbacks and Vintage 30s. Okay, so that's probably what it is. Um, and you know what? I knew it was two different speakers. Do you, do you so mic we might the bottom or top or both? We mic the bottom. Okay, that's Vintage 30s then. Yeah. So, um, and it's funny because when I. And it sounds great. I, I, like I said, when I listened to it the next day on the flash drive, because when I mentioned the flash drive of the show, that's a multi-track mix of yeah. the show. So I'm hearing my guitar, and it sounds great. So I'm, I'm really ecstatic about that. Um, when I go into the studio a lot, I, I find if I'm, I tend to hit really hard. So I find 75s work best when I hit hard in the studio. It just, it's like a tighter bottom end. Um, but I also have this cabinet that's got 65s in it, which does its own thing too. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I like to have different flavors. And it's funny, because a guy like me, like, hey, don't you just like one P90? This guitar has two humbuckers. I'm like, do you like eat pizza every day? Like, we yeah. all like different flavors, man. Chill out. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, Let's see. Uh, we got one other question here. Uh, Tagman Ibanez says, Phil, is your favorite brand pickup Arcane, which I think you mentioned earlier? Yeah. Um, and if so, what do you like about them and how do they compare to other pickup brands? Um, it's, it's funny because um, I was, when I started really digging on, on P90s, they were all vintage P90s, like from the 50s. And not a lot of people can get close to that that sound, whether it's the magnets they're using or anything like that. But so I knew it wasn't going to be, maybe it's the age thing, maybe because the magnet's 60 years old, maybe because the cop, you know, the wiring is 60 years old, everything ages, right? Same thing with the wood. So um, when I talked to Rob about this, I, again, I geeked out. We were like, hey, why don't we try this? Why don't we try that? And I told him, well, look, I found Gibson makes a P94, which is like a, a humbucker sized P90 and I had thrown a couple of those in guitars and was really happy with those. So I was like, we got to beat that. And he's like, Oh, okay. So he built me, he, he built a couple of P90s and it ended up being a higher resistance, but a thinner wire. So I still get, and this is what I, I define a P90 as angry. And then when you turn it down, it's sweet. Mm -hmm. so this the thinner wire even though the output is a little more the thinner wire gave it the anger but more clarity than any of the any other p90 i was using so the clarity was there when it was on 10 and it still remained sweet when i turned it down so he he pretty much nailed it the second time well, that's cool, cool. Right. yeah i love p90s yeah I, you know cool, man I have to get a guitar with a P90. I was just thinking about that just the other day. Um, you don't have a P90? Thing. I get a go. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I don't. I have single in my Telecaster over there. Single coils. Uh, you know, I've got a Strat like guitar, but I don't have any P90. So I, I definitely need to try it. Um, you need a 1959 ju single uh, double cut Junior Red. Those are the best, man. I love those. Those are the best. They're, they're actually reason, reasonably priced, really, for a vintage guitar. Yeah. Not too they're bad. under 10 grand right now. They're, no, yeah. they're like five. Five-ish. Wow. Five-ish. Five, five, five and a half. Something That's like that. awesome. Yeah. Not, 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 the, not, the, not the break the bag guitar. No. I mean, yeah, it's, I, it's still money, but... Yeah, it's money, but I mean they're great guitars. They really are. Great. But at least you're buying you're buying a vintage, you know, single. Set. Well, yeah, but you're left-handed, so just just throw. Just never mind. Yeah, but that one you just turn it upside down. <laughs> you just turn two. that upside down. You're good. That's turn true. It down, there's only two knobs. That's true. Yeah, it's, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Way. Not a big deal. That's true. Um, hey, this is a good question. Randall Aiken asks, and I'm you know I, I also Hi, want Randall. to Randall. You're always here. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for coming, Randall. And Stan Adams, I'm sorry, man. I, if I didn't get to your question, if and people, if I don't get to your questions, please don't get upset with me. I'm tr going through the chat um, and managing and I'm all no this. Help. Yeah, Dave's no help. So I'm trying to manage all of this uh, myself. So please don't get upset if I don't ask a question, Stan. If you're still around, ask your question, and I promise I'll get to it. Um, 
Randall Aiken says, Phil, since Ra Richie Sambora was such a big part of Bon Jovi, did you sense any resistance from the audience or did you feel welcomed as the new guitarist? It was split. I mean, of course, of course there's going to be resistance, you know. Um, I probably would have resisted myself. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, you know, I mean, I didn't, I made it known because, I mean, at the first, the first time in 2011 when Ashley just subbed in for Richie, um, there was a lot of people that were, you know, uh, angry. But a lot of people realized that, you know, the, the show must go on. It's, you know, it's a big touring band. There are people that go to multiple shows. So if you're going to 10 shows, that's 10 concert tickets, that's 10 flights, that's 10 hotel rooms. And some of that stuff you can't get a refund on. So how do you tell those people that, hey, okay, we're canceling the next month? Like, like you can't. So, but I, I let it know because the media actually got on my nerves about the whole thing. I was there just helping the band out. Mm -hmm. And people, it was the media saying stuff, Phil X replaces Richie Sambora. And I just got pissed. I, I just went on Twitter and I said, I hate that the media is saying I'm replacing Richie Sambora. Richie's coming back. I'm just helping the band out. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that seemed to get a lot more people on my side. They were like, oh, he doesn't want Richie's job. He's just helping our favorite band out. Great. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. So and then, there, and then, you know, it made it like a better, a better situation. You know, because it's it's hard. It's really hard. A lot of a lot of Bon Jovi fans are just they're all about Richie, and I understand that. I totally do. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's they they were kind of a duo, you know. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have got a great uh, comment here, Phil uh, from Alex Zalet. So I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher your last name, Zalensi. I think Phil, you are my favorite guitar player. You are so original and unique. There is no other guitar player like you. I'm a big fan of you and your drills. Thanks, man. Alex, right? Uh, Alex, yep. Thanks, Alex. That's very sweet. Thank you. Yep, very nice. Uh, and then another one, Islander Winder, fellow Canadian Phil X, you rock. Remember the Triumph days? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes we talk do. Triumph, like the, the band Triumph from, from Canada? Is that what we're talking? Wait, what? Or, I'm, I'm Triumph, right? The band? Oh, oh he's like... I know, it's well. Oh, okay. Okay. No, it's breaking. Okay, I'll get off it. <laughs> I'm on a chair, it's going to break. <laughs> okay. You all right? Yeah, sorry, what was the last thing I missed? Uh, what was I saying? Um, Triumph, as the band Triumph, yes. Oh, was it the yeah. band Triumph? Yeah, yeah, okay. That's right. Totally. I mean, that was a, an interesting situation, too. Um, you replaced another guitar player. I guess that's what I do, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, you're, you're like Josh Freeze. Oh my God, that's funny. <laughs> uh, I love Josh Freeze. Um, no, the, the the trying thing was cool. You know, it was back then. You know, back in uh, 90, 92, 93, and um, I was, uh, you know, looking for a gig, and they were looking for a guitar player. So we did a record and a bunch of shows. And they're great guys. I saw Gil and Mike like last year. Hmm. So I didn't know that. I did not know that you worked with them. That's super cool. Oh, it was um, funny. This is a funny story. This uh, this guy in LA came up to me, and uh, he knew my name was Phil, but I guess he didn't know it was Phil X. And he came up to me. He goes, "Hey, man, I'm uh, I'm from Buffalo. <laughs> I hear you're from Toronto." Uh, what bands you play with? Maybe I heard of them. And I'm like, well, I played with Alda Nova and I played with Triumph. And he's like, Triumph? Was that before or after Phil X? <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I'm like, dude, I am Phil X. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. Uh, who did he think you were? Yeah. I, Phil somebody else. <laughs> Phil, Phil Campbell from Motorhead. I don't know. That's funny. Um, this is a good question, Phil. And by the way, how are you doing on time? It's we're, we're going on an hour and a half now. Um, yeah, I think we have to tie it up soon. My okay. Bat, I'm on my laptop, and the battery got into red, and my adapter's nowhere to be. But okay. let's get this question. Let's you're go. Just gonna, hey, you're just gonna I'm go gonna, away real if quick. I, if I go away, I'm gone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. No problem. No problem. We'll know. Quick questions, okay. then. Quick questions. Yeah, I'll jump in real fast. Uh, what have you been listening to lately? From Me. Rock, rock <laughs> Music Eleven. From what? 
from Brock Music 11. He's Hi, at. Brock Music. I listen to me a lot. No, um, because I'm listening to uh, the latest Drills record a lot, and and we're going in a mix mode, so I'm I'm uh, I'm uh, picking at stuff, going, oh, I could fix that, or that lyric could be better, or that vocal could be better, or something like that. So yeah, I'm listening to me. Anything new? Not really much. Um, um, I don't know. What about you, Dave? What are you listening to? You know, it's funny. I had someone that contacted me today. <laughs> about getting a, an amp for his for him as an endorsement, you know? Yeah. And and I'm like, well, you know, he sent me the information on his band and which I'm trying to pull up right now so I can actually think I know what I'm talking about. Um and I, I watched their video and stuff and I'm like, wow, they're great. Don't you love that? I'm 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 like, ah, I'm into it. And and evidently they're produced by uh Cato, this producer Cato did uh, like Pop Evil and did Pretty Reckless and and, oh, right, right, and, right. and a bunch of stuff and and um, they're an Orange County band actually here. Wow. And um, and hell, you know, I might find this uh, if you give me a minute. So hold on. <laughs> okay. While well, you're looking, um, one other thing I saw was that you played on the Daughtry record. Yeah. I did, um, I did, I played on the first two. I did all the guitars, but a cameo slash solo on the first record in 2005 or six. Hmm. And then I did some, a bunch of overdubs on the second one. So yeah, we have a history. That's super cool. Yeah. Cause there was some really great songs. I mean, on that. I oh, think it's great songs. I mean, those are the songs that I still hear when I go to the mall. Those are the songs that from that first record, and it's funny because you're like, "Oh, that's me." <laughs> but, I didn't um, know that was you. That's really that's wild. Yeah, so it, going it, home and the, the yeah, it became a calling card for me. It was like, "Hey, what? Who did the Daughtry record? Let's get that guy." And then I get a call, <laughs> and it'd be like, "Hey, can you come in?" And then it was really specific. One producer called up and said, "Hey, yeah, we want you to come and do guitars on Thursday. Can you bring the acoustic you used on the Daughtry record?" <laughs> Like wow. that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah real, that's real wow. specific. Yeah. So, so that band that I was looking up, it's they're called Them Evils. Them Evils. And, uh, them Evils. Uh, and uh, they're pretty cool. They're they're good. They, I'm gonna they, check it out. Go go online. They have an official video out, and uh, it's pretty good. Like trio. I love trios. Trio. It's, it's a rock band for sure. You know. Awesome. Good fuzzy guitars, fuzzy guitars, not not too you know raw and organic and you know. That's good, the way it should be, man. You know, not not like produced. Yeah, killer. Not too produced. So I was like, wow, oh, yes, you yes, I want you to have an amp. <laughs> <laughs> Please. That's wicked. Please. Did you ever get a hold of um the guy from Greta Greta Van Fleet? No, not yet. I have I have to work on that. I haven't worked on that. Yeah, have you heard of that band? No, uh, Greta Van, Van Fleet. Greta Van, Van Greta, Fleet. Greta these, Van Fleet. Yeah. These guys are like you know a little older than your son, and uh, <laughs> um, they're young. No, they're like they're like really young, and uh, uh, they're like uh, they're getting a lot, a lot, a lot of press. Um, they're sort of like Led Zeppelin and the Black Crows blended. Wow. So yeah. really young. And they can do it, and they do it great live, and the singer can wail. But, but if he's they that young, literally he's, look like they're in high school. But but if he's that young, his nuts are going to drop, and he's going to lose that. <laughs> no, no, no. See, you know, it's funny. It's funny you said that because I, I was actually when I was in my trip to Detroit when I saw Paul McCartney. We actually I went because John Five was on the show, and oh, we, wow. and he happened to be playing when I was there too. So we went to go see him. And yeah. Greta Van Fleet was opening up the whole festival. Wow. And um, and so I'm watching him, and as I'm sitting there with my friend Dave, we're, I'm sitting there, and I look over to him halfway through the set, and I go, imagine what he's going to sound like when his balls drop. <laughs> <laughs> Dave just fucking broke out laughing, and he's like, I didn't expect that to come out of your mouth. <laughs> That's funny. See? No, no I think actually. Us singers like, know what we're actually, talking about. Actually, he's, I think. They have. Them dropping will be <laughs> even better. So good. So yeah, yeah. He, no, he's a. Uh, I think he might. He might have hit puberty. And I the think. and the bass player, man, the bass player was like 
like John Paul Jones style, like just crazy good. Yeah. Love that. And like he even played keyboards and like stuff like the same kind of vibe, you know, wow. did that whole trip. And Love I was that. like the bass player was killing. Where, what did they? What else did they play, Dave? Because I know they only have four songs out that on that EP. So oh, I I don't know. They played a full. Set. I mean, while well, they're opening set, so probably they played a half hour or something. But um, no, I think they played some other songs of theirs. Oh, some other songs. Okay. Yeah, they I think they have covered. Stuff. It's not. No, no cover. Okay, that's they, cool. They they were they were really really good. Uh, I mean, um, maybe I just am getting really excited about anything that is remotely like a, a old school rock band. You know, yeah, and, totally. And We're I'm starving. I'm okay with that. You got a good oh. song, and you sound even remotely like an old school rock band. I'm in. Right. Totally. And you know what? What else? What about old school? We we played Rock in Rio um, a couple of weeks ago in Brazil, and the night before us, it was Def Leppard, who were awesome, mm -hmm. and Aerosmith, and Steven Tyler, man, 69, still singing, and oh. singing his ass off, and working the crowd, and and. Still attracting the chicks. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. he's, I was blown away. Like he was still okay, dude. You, you're the man. Amazing. Yeah. How did Joe Perry sound? How did Joe Perry? Sound? He had a great night too. He was sounding yeah. awesome. He really did. He sounded great. Cool. And I was, I was worried about that because the last time I saw Joe Perry, he was kind of like, you know, half in the bag and and kind of like. He looked weary. Yeah. He yeah. Looked a little weary. Yeah. But he seemed in good shape and played great all night. Even slide intonation was great. Everything's awesome. That's good. good yeah, I, I love seeing that. You know, yeah, when you go, because I'm, I'm still a fan, man. I go see these bands, and it's like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so any, young, any young bands that you know sound even remotely like any of these classic bands, it's okay. It's time to reintroduce introduce all of that to the young crowd. It really is. It's okay if you sound like that band. That's okay because they don't. The kids don't know any better anyway. Well, no, but I, I gotta say, I gotta add, Dave, because I do a lot of uh, you know band camps where I'm working with kids that are 11 to 17, and uh, they come in and they 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 want to jam Sabbath and Zeppelin and Deep Great. Purple, and it's like, oh, this is so awesome. That you want to do Zeppelin today? Let's do Zeppelin today. It's like so. Yeah. And it's like all the camps that I do or when I do clinics and, and I'm, I'm working with kids and stuff. It's just, it's, it's good parenting, I think. You got <laughs> to blame, you, you blame the parents for that. Are you kidding? My, 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 my kid loves ACDC. So I'm like, That's all awesome. right. And yeah, I don't know how that happened, but yeah. It, it just, it was on in the car one day and then all of a sudden he was just like transfixed on it. Back in black record. So. Killer. Good. You know, start, and, start him early. You know, exactly. un unfortunately, like he always wants that record. Like, uh, to the point, oh, to the it was point. like my my cousin's son is fifteen and plays bass, and he's left-handed, and he's got this jazz copy, and he plugs into an old trainer combo bass amp, and it's cranked up so it's fuzzy, and we're jamming with my son's, uh, my uh, no, my friend's son who plays drums, and I'm like, hey man, what do you want to play? And he goes. You know anything off Mob Rules? <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> let's do it, man. Let's do. Let's do track. Let's do side A. You know? That's awesome. You know, uh, uh, you know, I was at um, last year. I was at Jerry Cantrell's birthday party, right? And yeah. so um, um, Robert Trujillo's kid was there. Oh, he's killer. right. A real deal. And, and he had his. Evidently, he has a band, and he has his guitar player friend was there with him. And they were sitting in Jerry's living room jamming through these two little amps, right? Yeah. And like, and and Pete Thorne was with me, and we're sitting there watching this, looking at each other, going, "Holy crap!" I think the guitar player, somebody's kid too, right? I I don't know. I maybe maybe I'm not sure. I mean, Robert was there too, and I'm like, "Dude, your son is badass." <laughs> <laughs> he goes, "Yeah." <laughs> he was talking to me for a while, and I'm like, um. Yeah, it was. It was. It, yeah, I was. We were watching him and just like, holy crap! I, you know, just like, all right, that's enough. I can't. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> You're I like, mean, I did Dude. a, I did a rock and roll fantasy camp. No, not Roger. No, it was School of Rock in Milwaukee. And these kids, uh, I got to play Highway Star with these kids. And apparently, these kids, all the kids that played with the counselors, are in the top one percent of twenty five hundred high school musicians mm -hmm. across the country. 
Wow. And 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 Canada, my my bass player was this little cool dude from Winnipeg. Um, uh -huh. But the guitar player, I go, hey, so we're doing how we start. He goes, yeah, this is no rehearsal. Walk on stage and peel faces. <laughs> and I and he's this little guy, probably 15, 16. <laughs> he's got his strat. I go, so we're gonna we're gonna harmonize Richie Blackmore, right? He goes, he goes, yeah. I'm like, so you want to go high or low? And he goes, you pick. I'm like. <laughs> You got both parts down? Are you kidding me? Okay, well, hey, I'm here for you, so you pick. He goes, I'll do the harmony, you take the lead. I'm like, oh my God. And, and we <laughs> nailed it, man. The kid, and then we played in an amphitheater with like 500 other students there, and we just kicked ass. And it was, and oh, man, that, that guy's mentality, that guy, that young guitar player, he had the balls and the tenacity and the, whatever you want to do, man, I'm here. It was like so awesome, you know what I mean? So maybe there's hope. Yeah, there's definitely so hope. what you're saying, there's hope. There's hope. They, they just have to get old enough to make that you know, happen. I, I don't know if they can make money at it. They got to start writing great songs. That's the yeah. next That's yeah. the hard part. That is the hard part. Yeah. That's the integral part. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of talent out there. I mean, you see it on YouTube every day, but uh, I want some good music. Um, I want a chorus. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, so let me see if there's any. Uh, there's one other question, um, and then we can. I w I'll let you go, Phil, because I know your your battery's running. Um, do you still use the Tone Master? Someone's asking. I don't know what that is. Yeah, it's my uh, it's my my um, ma magnetone. It's it's from the fifties. It's like an eight watt amp. It's it's actually says accordion amp on the back. Mm. And I take it to every session. It's kind of falling apart and, and the speaker's becoming unglued, but it still has a charm. That's cool. And so you use it on every session? I pretty much take it everywhere because it's, it's an amazing overdub amp. Because if you have like a wall of Friedman's as your, your basic mm -hmm. track, and it just, without having to be too loud, it just has something that those big amps don't have. So it kind of yeah. like, pops in the mix yeah you put like a little amp like that like in the mix with a like a or like a supra or or something something little like that and it just pops right out in the mix it's beautiful yeah i've been using the the new supra 1606 for that too it's like a little five eight watt five inch speaker mm -hmm. it's uh because it, 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 it has that thing that that uh it just sits on top of the mix perfectly mm -hmm. you know it's got that frequency and character but yeah, the Tone Master is still killing. Maybe I don't take it every time now because it's falling apart. <laughs> Maybe I got to get some special sessions. Maybe I got to get some Gorilla Glue and some clamps. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hey, uh, we got a comment from uh, Todd, Todd Rassicott. And dude, I'm sorry, man. He says, uh, fans equals viewers, not enough fans interaction. Uh, I'm sorry, bro. I thought I was getting a lot of questions from people. Uh, come back next time and I'll get, I'll get to your question. And I didn't see your question. So I just want to be open and honest. Um, and, uh, the guitar guru network, uh, he had a comment. He said, Phil, your guitar playing speaks for itself. Your singing is equally fantastic, which I also think your singing is, is awesome. Wow. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I was really surprised. I didn't know that you, um, that you, that you sang. So saying like a banshee. Yeah, man, you, you're, you're good. You're really good, man. Screaming um, banshee. So he said, keep up the good work, hoping to see you at NAMM. Excellent. Thank you. So with that, I will. Um, I want to thank you, Phil, for coming oh, on. Oh, thanks man. for having me, man. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. No, thank you. You've been awesome. You're such a down-to-earth guy. There were a lot of comments about that, too. You're just, you know, you're super cool and down-to-earth and easy to talk to. And uh, I appreciate you coming on. So. Well, it's uh, good to meet you. And Same here. I've known Dave for so long, and it's good to have uh, – Another nerd out session. <laughs> like, exactly. More nerd out. More gear. continuation of Gitcom, but in the U.S. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Let's go. Let's go study some volume pots. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, guys, I want to tell about our next uh, our next two shows coming up. So our next show, which is November third. Oh, we lost Phil. He's gone. It's over. Oh. Well. His battery died. Well, we did get to say thank you and everything with him. So if he's yeah. gone, he's gone. Um, our next show is with John Soar. 
Yep. November 3rd. Mm-hmm. And, and then November 17th, I think, is uh, Henning Pauly. HP. Yeah. So speaking of GitCon, we will talk to Henning about GitCon. The GitCon guy, and we'll hear the, the scoop on GitCon and how I'll be there next year. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe I'll be there next year. So maybe <laughs> we, we can do some videos. Well, yeah, that, that would make sense, right? Yeah. So, so do we have we do we have more questions that I can finish off here or we can answer or address here for disgruntled people? Sure. And um, by the way, just want to say so again. Start, thank- in the, start at the beginning of the list again and go through and see what we missed. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. And Phil, thank you again for joining, man. Really appreciate it. You sent out a lot of, uh, you shared it everywhere. And thanks again, man. Uh, it was great meeting you. Um, so let's see if there's any. Uh, he wrote, laptop died. Thanks a lot, man. Very cool. So I'll write him back. And um, did you find any questions, Dave? Uh, I don't know. I just started looking. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you know, so we all got to look too. And if you guys have any more questions, re re ask them so we see it faster. <laughs> if you guys are still with us, someone said, "What was the white guitar Greg Koch was playing in the Friedman booth in Nam in 2016?" Uh, I do believe that would have been a uh, Friedman vintage S guitar, which. Um, 2016. I'd have to look for sure, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. And um, uh, that's a vintage S is a is a Strat that that we did come out with for a little while with a previous Luthier, but we are now reintroducing it now this year with Grover Jackson with a slightly updated version of it. And I know uh, I know Doug Rappaport has one out there right now. He has one out with some Japanese artist that he's been playing or playing with in Japan. Um, so watch for that. I think that answered that. Cool. You know, we had a suggestion also for having Doug on the show. Yeah, no, I, I want to have Doug. Yeah, he's on the list, you know. Yep. You, you have to understand people that, uh, to Mark's chagrin, uh, we do everything at the last minute here. <laughs> <laughs> That's Mark's okay. like, who are we going to have on the show? And I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, let me see who I can dig up. You know, right. and, and uh, well, you came up uh, with Phil, man, which is great. Well, Phil, yeah, and and John too. At the same time, actually, it was almost booked in the same day. Just John got back to me late. Oh, um, so uh, also, who's agreed to do the show is Brian Ray from Paul McCartney's band. Um, so we're we're gonna at some point in time do a show with Brian. Wow. And he's a total nerd geek about vintage guitars and stuff. So, so that should be fun to talk about. And that would be stuff. awesome. So I've I've known Brian a long time, way before Paul McCartney. So, uh, wow, so he's he's had a, a career playing with a bunch of people from Etta James to several French art. I mean, he better let him talk about it. So I don't, I don't know. But when I saw Brian, I asked him about being on the show, and he wants to come on. So, killer. Yeah, so that'll be good, and and I sure I'm sure I can get the rest of them too. So, <laughs> Paul, Paul McCartney, uh, maybe not that one. <laughs> that one, I right, don't that. don't ask don't ask for Eddie Van Halen and don't ask for Paul McCartney. That's probably not going to happen. So yeah, yep, yeah, we'd love to have Eddie on, but we know that's not going to happen. Yeah. So, um, letter says excited to see John Sir on the show. Yeah, me too, man. That's going to be awesome. Um, Rusty Anderson. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll that... Rusty on. Rusty's an old friend of mine. Like, really old. Like, Rusty and I go back to maybe 1989. That's how long I've known Rusty. So, pretty much since I've been a, since I was 19 or something. Wow. And Rusty, correct me if I'm wrong. That's Anderson Guitars, right? Because I'm, I'm, Sounds no, super. Rusty Anderson's the other guitar player in Paul McCartney. Oh, you see, I don't know shit. Yeah, okay. you don't know. Yeah, you don't know anything. I don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking Anderson guitars. Okay, Rusty Anderson. Yeah, you know, it's it's been a while since I've followed um, Paul's band. So yeah, 
Well, yeah, Ru Rusty was a uh, big time session guy in LA and had a band called uh, that was signed in the '90s called Edna Swap, and uh, played. Uh, he he was the guitar player on Live in La Vida Loca. Hmm. Um, not everyone knows that. Um, there was a good guitar yeah. playing, great guitar playing on that. Yeah, no, and and you know he's been around. For, just he's a cool. He's a great guy. Okay, yeah. we should, there's a lot of people actually. You know, <sighs> another friend of mine. Uh, Oh, might be good. Uh, Michael Lockwood. Um, Michael Lockwood is an old friend of mine. Michael Lockwood was was married to Lisa Marie Presley and has been going through a bitter divorce with her, um, where she said a bunch of stuff that's just not true, and uh, and drug his drug his name through the mud. But he's an amazing uh, producer and songwriter, and and he used to play with Fiona Apple and Amy Mann and. Hmm. Uh, he might be a great guy too. I haven't asked him yet, but I'm sure he'd do it. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. And of there's course, a, there's, we, a, there's a lot of people I know that I can just call, and we can get we can make it happen. So, well, we talked about Steve Lukather too. So yes, uh, and Steve did agree to do it. So uh, I just have to get him at the right time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. Um, oh, uh, we'll talk about that. And yeah, I, I I sent a text out. Okay, cool. Uh, sweet. Yeah, I know it's his birthday today, I think, by the way. Yeah, so, yeah, 60. 60 years old, man. That's crazy. Well, I'm going to be 50, so. <laughs> uh, let's see. Vernon Reed. That's a great – yeah, he would be great to have. I don't know Vernon. How about how about uh, um, Mike Inez from Allison Chains? We could probably have Mike. Mike oh. loves to talk gear. But it's going to be base gear to chat. So what? That'd be great. Mike is jamming in the other room right now as we speak. No, really. Really, really. So, Can you hear him loudly? It's not as loud as I thought it would be because you can't hear him. So, yeah, I can't hear anything. No. Yeah. Um, let's see. Any other questions? Uh, someone wrote, "It'd be fun to hear about base gear." Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's not, it doesn't have to all be about guitar, um, even though I don't play any bass. Uh, someone said Rusty has two divided by 13 model amps. I think it's, yes, I've seen him play with Palmer. Rusty is now playing Morgan amps. Oh, really? So, yeah, I, he's got divided by 13 cabinets on stage, but he's pairing, uh, playing a, a couple, a pair of Joe Morgan. Um, you know what? I'm not exactly sure which ones he chose. It might have been AC20. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but they sounded great live. I'm tell you that. Oh, I can imagine. Amazing. Um, we got a comment here, Dave. You modded a Red seventy four Super Bass for me years ago. Threw a Cantrell thing in there. Still a badass amp. Cool. That's cool. Who was that? Uh, Brock Music Eleven. I think I remember the amp. I, I, the red red stands out. I, although I've done a couple red ones, so hmm, a super bass. That's cool. Um, Timothy Pierce wants to know, and I know the answer to this. How is the tube and qual speaker quality going on le recently? Remember, you said there were issues. I mean, speaker quality is generally pretty good. I mean, we've we've had a few people blow up the Creamback sixty five watt. Uh, M speakers. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but um, not that many. I mean, maybe a handful in all the speakers we put out there. So that that's not too bad. Uh, uh, tubes. Tubes are lousy. Um, tubes are, I think, are switching now to uh, EH EL34s from Electro Harmonics um, because JJs are unusable at the moment. For me, um, lots and lots of problems, and and I don't want to get emails uh, from people that are, you know blame it on the amp, uh, and it's not the amp, it's the tube. So the first thing they go for is I bought four thousand dollar amp and it doesn't work now. Okay, right. I, I totally understand that, but unfortunately, tubes are not in my control. 
and and I'm testing them really thoroughly too, and still there's issues. Yeah, so, well, I mean, uh, I, it it wasn't your fault. It that happened to you too. So yeah. Same. So, so not, it wasn't your fault. I didn't blame you because uh, you know the tube failed, and you know after a couple of weeks, I mean, I'm not. Happens. I'm not. Um, I can't. I can't use them. I can't use them anymore. And the the Chinese EL 34s are also issues. They they tend to short really easy. So if you when I test tubes now, I really it takes me way longer to test all the amps because I'm really paying close attention to the power tubes. I'm literally banging on them with screwdrivers, you know, and and making sure that they're not going to short. Because mm -hmm. with an amp, when it's running, if you bang on the tubes with the screwdriver, you have to know how hard to bang on it. Obviously, you could break one real easily, but you bang on it, and if they're going to short, they'll short on the bench. And that's we want them to exhibit their problem before they leave, not right. with your at your house. But but still, some of the problems just wind up. It seems fine, and I test it for a while, and everything seems good, and then you know it goes to the customer, and poof, one day it's fine, and the next day I turn it on, poof. Yep. Um. So, I think EH is my answer right now. Uh, they seem to be a reliable tube. They sound good. Um. I'm gonna go with that right now. Cool. So I I don't really have a lot of choices. Do you find that there's a difference between uh, the, well, at least the JJs, the EL34B, the EL34L, the E34-2? Well, like, e e e e e e E34L and the EL34 is the same exact tube. The only difference is the test spec when they're testing the tubes, the, the, the test spec, whatever that might be, because I don't know exactly. Mm -hmm. um, is 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 higher on the e thirty four ls so they're a little uh, they break up a little less they they're mm. a little little cleaner in nature a little punchier um, but they're the same too it's just sl slightly different on the scale and they rate those are the e thirty e thirty four ls and they rate the other ones the el thirty fours the el thirty four two uh, I tried. I didn't care for it, so. Okay. Uh, so um, I actually did an A/B test between those three uh, uh, recently, actually, and when I switched two vendors, and uh, and and it's not. It's a batch problem with these tubes. It's not the two vendors I'm getting them from. I've gotten them from three different vendors, and the same issues are popping up in all the vendors. So it's a it's mm -hmm. a batch related issue. Um. The EHs so far are testing great, no failures whatsoever on the, on the bench, not so far at least. I haven't, mm -hmm. They just started, so I don't, we'll see how that goes. But, um, oh, fingers crossed. I, you know, fingers crossed on those. Yeah. Because after that, then I'm really out of luck here. I'm going to be switching to 5881s. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that would suck. Although it's probably not much of a difference. It actually sound pretty good. But <laughs> yeah, um, so that that's the update on that. So that's where I'm at. So you'll see all new BEs with EH uh, electroharmonics EL34s in them. So. Okay, I'll have to switch out those EL34s that I have. I'll use them. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you bought the twos, right? I bought the twos. Of course, I bought the twos. So whatever, that's all right. I'll use them. And then I'll just get another set. Um, someone said, uh, Craig Lavender, why do some Bucks and Bettys have uh, EL34s and some have 6550s? That's not true. Um, okay. Early early Bucks and Bettys had 5881s, and then later I switched to EL34s because I sort of liked how it sounded better. Um, but since then, I've switched caps, so I don't even know how it sounds now. So... Um, it might be cool with the 5881s again. Uh, if I could switch it to the 5881s, that'd be great because they're a very reliable tube, and we use them in the Dirty Shirley's, and everyone loves it. So, um, In fact, anything I could switch to those tubes, I'd be happy about at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that sucks. Um, Someone asked, I know it's not Grover's uh, wheelhouse. This is Cheddar Kung Pao. I know it's not Grover's wheelhouse, but any plans for a Gibson scale LP special junior Friedman guitar? 
He had this name. Oh, really? Yeah. There's a set neck. Not in the not. We're not talking exact Gibson, but there is a set neck style guitar coming out at this now. Mm. Awesome. So, um, someone wants to know what you're drinking. Uh, Nikos Kami- Kamisas. I was drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not drinking tonight either. I thought about it and then I decided no. Um, Hello, Dave. Well, I actually, so- I lied. I actually had one sip of scotch after I was done with the water, but that, but I only had a sip left in the bottle, so that was, yeah. <laughs> that was it. Damn. Uh, Dave, I, hello, Dave. I sold a 50-watt 72 Marshall Pete Thorne. Yes, you did, and it sounds great. Benjamin Murphy, apparently he brought it to you to dial in. How would you compare that to your 68 sonically? The 72 seemed particularly aggressive to me. Yeah, it's similar to mine. Oh, wow. It's, it's, it's similar to mine. Yeah, a little different, but it's, it's similar. It, it sounded great in the end. All right, cool. Benjamin, I mean, thanks. I didn't do – it was – Completely stock on the inside. I didn't do really much to it. I think there was a couple loose wires that I had to touch up and stuff. And uh, um, I think, uh, and I had to retension the tube sockets because the preamp tube sockets were uh, really loose. But you knew that because you told Pete. Oh. It's a great app, man. Cool. Thanks for telling it to him. It sounds great. He loves it. I think Pete's quite happy with it based on oh, yeah. all, all the posts. Um, Patrick Behar, any plans for the Friedman speakers? Yes, I hope to have them at NAM. That's Those been a long, sell. long thing. So uh, we're just doing the labels for them now, and then it's just a matter of ordering them. Um, so the ordering process takes a few months to get them. So, um, so probably, yeah, we might be getting them around the end of January, so that might be that might be correct. It might be maybe the end of February, but that's that's it. They'll be offered as an option in Friedman cabinets, and they'll also be available to purchase on our website, but not any stores, only through our website. Hmm. As and an OEM, they- OEM replacement speaker through our website. How would you uh, compare them to? What would you say that? You know their voice. If I, if I had to say, it's it's sort of like you have a an older greenback sort of tone that's a little more solid sounding with a bit more punch in the low end. So it's got a little more oomph behind it, mm-hmm. uh, but the top end's nice and sweet. It's not fizzy, hmm. um, and. But it's it's got a you know it's got a lot of balls behind it. It's got it's basically kind of a real more solid greenback tone, vintage style greenback tone, with more oomph, more punch. Mm-hmm. And if these are made by Celestion, yeah. Or, okay. Yep. Cool. It's our own Friedman branded Celestion. That's super cool. Yeah, and they'll be available as an upgrade to cabinets, so you'll be able to order the cabinets with them in it. Um. I don't know if it's it might be slightly more for the cabinet because the speaker costs a bit more to us. So if you order it with that option. Mm. Okay. Try not to make it much more, just slightly. Yeah. Uh, we've got a, a question here. And let's just go a few more minutes, um, if you don't mind. It's getting, yeah. getting kind of late. Um, Dave, I am converting an Ashdown 40 watt to a Trainwreck Express amp. No center tap on the power transformer, so full bridge rectifier. How do I get the bias power supply to work? That was from Islander Winder. Oh, boy. Um, that's a good question with no center tap. Be easy if you had a center tap. Um, hmm. Send me an email. I'll come up with something for you. Hmm. Friedmanamps at gmail.com. Okay. Uh, I, I, I have to like just think about it for a minute, and it's kind of hard to do right now. 
Right. Um, let's see. How, someone asked, how would that compare to, say, the Lynchback, your speakers? It's probably more in that ballpark of a Lynchback. Um, it's a little different than that, though. Mm -hmm. And they want to know what wattage. It's a 50-watt speaker. So similar to the Lynchback. Um, Dave, do you break in speakers before you build a cab? Not in, not, f yes, I can for some people I have, um, but not on a regular basis. No. Does it make a big difference? Yes, it does. But there's no way that we can do it in production. It's just physically impossible. There's just too many cabinets and stuff going out. What do you recommend to, uh, you know, a person getting an amp and having to break it, break it in? Besides That's just a playing. tough one. First of all, first of all, probably you need a, a, a place um, that you can make as much noise as you want. Uh, mm -hmm. How how I used to do it is I used to take a, um, and this is kind of an archaic way, but it makes sense. Uh, I would take the the four twelve and put it face down on the ground in the carpet or something. Plug a speaker cable into it. I have a, a hundred watt like replica plexi amp that I have. And I would, I would take a guitar looper pedal and play a riff of choice, whatever you want to play, into the looper pedal, through the pl plexi, on 10, through the cabinet for hours. <laughs> so that's why I say you got to have a place you can really do it, you know? Right. Um, right. Um, and that makes sense. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Like at three-hour clips, I would turn it off at three-hour clips, and and, you know, I would do it a lot in the cabinet. The more you do it, the better. Because um, if you, you can't go forever at that volume, the voice coils eventually will seize up. <laughs> you know, yeah, and you can destroy it. You can, and you can, you can possibly blow up a speaker too. So, um, but um, that works really well, and and it's interesting to hear the difference. And I did hear the difference, like new. At three hours, at six hours, at nine hours, I think I might have gone as far as fifteen hours or something. Hmm. And it's a big difference. It was alarmingly different. Hmm. <laughs> it was alarmingly the the top end gets so sweet and it, it, it takes away all the fizziness and and stuff and it's 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 pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. that's good to know. Good good luck doing that. Yeah, <laughs> at your house. First of all, your neighbors will hate you. Yeah, uh, that, <laughs> and that uh, although putting the cabinet face down on the ground does make it a lot quieter, but uh, it's still you know you can bury yeah. it in blankets and stuff too. But still, still going to be loud. You won't want to be there. You need to go out to have dinner or something. And, <laughs> you know. and then your neighbors will be knocking on your door. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! And you'll be gone. You'll be like, ah, fuck off. <laughs> yeah I, I mean i can't imagine that be on 10 because i haven't opened it up to pass like two yet yeah so. well pete did the video you know play a plexi there you go yeah well yeah but i think your amp would be louder I, well i've got the 50 watt plexi so i've, I've heard that on full 10 yeah well and, the, yeah 100 watts louder yeah totally especially a good one um, EVH said he ran his signature speakers for a month straight. Someone wrote, Roxy DePew wrote. Yep, I think he was torture testing it though. Yeah. Yeah, but they do they do considerably sound better uh, after you break them in, for sure. It's amazing how much darker it gets. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to try that. Well, to some degree. Um, Benjamin Murphy's asking, Dave, what prompted the change from the Lynch back to the 65 watt cream back in the Dirty Shirley's a while back? The Lynch back wasn't, uh, I wanted 16 ohm, and Lynch back was never available in a 16 ohm speaker. Um, and also, um, I, you know what? I actually, I think, prefer the Lynch back. But it, it wasn't as readily available, and it didn't come in, in the proper impedance for me, so it didn't make sense. Mm. 
So um, the Lynchback is a great speaker. It's a really good speaker. So I, I know there's a lot of people that like it. Oh, I've never tried it, so yeah. it's interesting. It's really cool. Okay. Let's give it a shot. Um, Dave, how does the Buxom Boost compare to the RC Booster? Totally different kind of. I mean, I mean, I guess you could look at it from uh, – uh, yeah, it doesn't really compare. It's, it's. I would say it's a little more transparent, um, um, or not, depending on how you dial it in. Um, just a little different. It's just another booster. It's another flavor. You know, I think that that actually has a gain knob on it, though the RC, and I think it does actually have a little bit of gain to it. It's not just a complete clean booster where the where the Buxom Boost is a clean booster. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and also, by the way, I've had, you know, I had the J Rocket uh, Rockway Archer, and I've got your Bucks and Boost. Definitely different flavors as well. Oh, totally different flavor, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The Boost, you can just shape it to be what you want it to be. You know, mm -hmm. you're just pushing the front end of the amp harder, and you're shaping it to be a treble booster or a mid-range booster or just a booster or a tightener or or... What do you want it to be? You know, that's the good thing about it. Yeah, I'm going to run it now in the loop, actually. Well, you can try that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it, it'll boost the volume um, mm -hmm. for you then. But you can use the EQ shaping a little bit, too. So you can, you know, if, if you want, if you're using it for leads to boost your lead, you can kind of boost the mid-range also, you know, and, gotcha. and dial that in so it kind of gives you, you know, more mid-range or less mid-range or more bass or yeah, cut through the mix. A again, little whatever bit. sound you want to hear. Yep. Cool. That's good stuff. Um, Keith has a question from the Guitar Guru Network. No uh, questions from him. Oh, okay. Keith, you're, you're out, no, buddy. No, sorry. No more questions, Keith. No. <laughs> uh, go ahead. <laughs> uh, Dave, Hi, can you, Dave, can you talk about any role that you may have had in the development of the original EVH brand 5150 amp? I had um, no role in it whatsoever. So uh, a guy named Mike Ulrich worked on that um, with Ed um, on doing that. Um, so no, never any role. The only thing I did ever do is we had a tube shootout once that I helped with where we listened to tubes in that particular amp and, and what he liked and where it was biased at. Mm -hmm. So Interesting. Yeah, yeah, well, of course, you've done the foot, the, the floorboards and everything. Yeah, too. the floorboards and the racks and stuff, yeah, but n nothing to do with the amp. Okay. Um, okay, this is a good question. TWF7847, Dave, why do your overdrive pedals sound so good and never compress compared to other overdrive competitor pedals? Oh, I don't know, man. The BEOD has compression. I mean, it's, it's like so much – it has more gain than I, I would ever use. I, I mean – you know, it's funny. I, it's funny. Everyone always is like, "I want more gain. I want more gain." And then I give them more gain in the in the BEOD, like more than even the amp has. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, "I wish it had less gain." <laughs> like, okay. Right. <laughs> so now there's a Dirty Shirley pedal. It has less gain. It has a mid range knob. Right. So, um, and for all those people that. The, the EQ section of that pedal is really the same as a BEOD, um, uh, but the, the and I, I said the EQ section, um, but there was an added mid-range boost knob. So all those people that have this pedal or want to get this pedal um, is just know that I would turn your mid-range at zero first, then dial in the pedal to your liking, and then if you feel you need more mid-range, then just pull it in slowly. Mm. Because people are starting with it way high, and a couple people have said, oh, it sounds a little boxy that way. It's because it's really boosted at that point. Mm. So, I, you know, started, and I've told people this now online, and, 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 and I didn't really make that clear, but started zero with it, and then, you know, after you dial in the rest of the knobs, then bring it in. And then you'll, you'll, you'll find your perfect spot. 
I don't think you'll find it's going to be at half, though. I think you're going to find it's going to be less than half. Mm. Yeah, just bring it in a little bit. Yeah, and I, the way I've been using the BEOD, because I've got it on my board, is um, I use it as a third channel kind of for the with the clean channel. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, that yeah. totally does that, man. Yeah. It's more gain. Why, why does it sound less compressed? I know... I think the, the, all the pedals, the Dirty Shirley pedal and the BEOD pedal, are very amp-sounding pedals. Um, uh, it, it's just sort of we, we came up with sort of a magic recipe, and there's a lot of DNA that are, is cross-pollinating between those two pedals, um, and, and that recipe really works, and it just sounds really you know, amp-like and, and good. Super cool. Um... Let me see if there's any other questions. Uh, I love the simple single knob boost. Otherwise, I'd be all over the buxom. Someone wrote Benjamin Murphy. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I, I like simple things too. I like simple amps. I like one channel amps, but I make multi channel amps. But you know what? What the idea behind behind the buxom boost again is like. Okay, so let's say a single knob boost, a good example would be MXR micro amp. It's a single boost. As you boost it, it tends to get a bit loose sounding. Um, so we have a tight knob on ours that will tighten up the, the, you know, the low end on it. Mm -hmm. And if you want to not use the EQ, just have the EQ switch off, and all you got is a tight knob and a, and a single knob. So all you got is a way to tighten up the low end and just have a single knob boost. So then you have it. Yep. That's the way I've been using it actually with yeah. so far. So I mean yep. don't. But you know, but likewise, if you want to take a dirty Shirley amp that we have and turn it into a metal amp, you can do that with the Buxom Boost. Yeah. You can totally boost the hell out of it and give it like a cut and sizzle and tighten up the low end and, and just totally make it like vicious. Mm-hmm. That is true. It's a great pedal. There's no doubt. Um, all right, let's go to the last question here. I'm starting to fade. Uh, Scott MacArthur, you get the last question in, buddy. Uh, Dave, any opinions on 7591s? Never used them for an amp. Hmm. So, no. I know 7591, yeah, it, it, that wasn't a widely used tube for guitar amps. There were some guitar amps that had them. Um, but, uh, never used them. Good question. Yeah. Cool. Now, now you have me intrigued. Now maybe I should make an amp that has them and see what it does. <laughs> or get like, or just get a set of them, throw them into, uh, uh it's not that simple with Sony 591s. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, that's too bad. Well, Hey, great show tonight, guys. This was awesome having Phil X on. Uh, he wrote me. He said he was sorry his computer died, but uh, he thanked everybody for coming on. And thank you, Phil X, for coming on. Yeah, um, thank you, Phil. And our next show is in two weeks with John Sewer. Are, is he cooking you brisket? No, but I'm not going to his house. Okay. But, uh, we, I, you know, I did say have scotch ready for that show. Okay. All right. And he likes scotch, so we'll see. We'll see All if he right. does that. I'll have a little bit too. So we'll we'll send out notice notices for everybody. Hit the subscribe button, please. You still um, have that same bottle of scotch, don't you? I do. I haven't touched it since that night. <laughs> <laughs> it's still sitting there. But I showed it to my daughter. She was like, What's this? I said, yeah. <laughs> then I Good said, stuff. I said, Here, take a smell. She's like, Oh, this is horrible. No, it's I, good. I said it tastes good. It does, but it just tore me up. So I'll have a I'll I'll have it with you guys on with John Sort. So <laughs> all right. Um all right guys, have a great night and uh we will have a great weekend. We'll be back in two weeks and we'll see yep. you soon. We'll see you in two weeks, guys. All right, thank you. Take care, guys. Yeah.